Packers against the Detroit Lions. Season's greetings from the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, where the playoff-bound Chicago Bears wind up their regular season against the Detroit Lions, who have lost only once here at home. Indoors, perfect weather. Outdoors, cold and blustery. And fans, coaches, players, and broadcasters are all happy to be winding up the season here in Detroit indoors. Hello, everybody. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris at the Silver Dome. And, Johnny, usually when you come into a game like this, despite the fact that the Bears are the most entertaining team in the NFL this year and the Lions tough at home, you still have to reach for those old cliches, pride, and next year's contracts when you discuss motivation for a meaningless game. And yet, we found out some different thoughts from the coaches. Yes, we talked to the coaches yesterday, and they've come up with some pretty good gimmicks. I don't know if you want to call them gimmicks, but some reasons for these players to play pretty good football. Well, from Dow Rogers' point of view, he said, I recognize that a win or a loss here doesn't mean a darn thing this season, but he said, I've told my players that they will be giving me their lasting impression for 1985 <laughs> with how they play out here today, and that's what he's going to carry away when he looks at next year's roster. As for Mike Ditka, the Bears would like to tie the regular season record for 15 wins. That was set by San Francisco last year. And then on the defensive side of the point, let's take a look. The Bears are number one in every category against the rush, against the pass, and overall, and they'd like to maintain that. So there are some incentives, but... I think we're going to have a fun game. That's what's important, to be fun. The refrigerator, what will he do? Walter Payton has some personal goals. They're just going to play a good football game, and I think we're going to be entertained. So we're just about ready for the kickoff. Well, there is Mike Ditka, the Bears coach, who has uh, certainly been able to enjoy this holiday season. Christmas coming up, and uh, his present came early. His team is going to the playoffs, and they'll have the two games at home. If they uh, get through the first one, it'll be all the way to the Super Bowl with home contest. Daryl Rogers, we saw him at the hotel this morning, uh, very uh, relaxed and casual about this final game, disappointed that his team was knocked out last week in their loss to Green Bay, but uh, nonetheless, they've had a rather remarkable season at home, and coming off a four-victory season last year, Daryl Rogers in his opening season as head coach of the Lions has done a real good job. Kevin Butler will kick it off. And Alvin Hall, a dangerous return man for the Lions, their all-time leader in that department, takes it at the wall. Got away from Morrissey of the Bears, and then is forced out at the 22-yard line by Cliff Griff, reserve linebacker number 52. So the Lions will start offensively, and today it will be Joe Ferguson starting for the injured Eric Hipple, Ferguson's first start of the year. Alvin Moore and James Jones, the running backs, Rookie Carl Bland for the injured Mark Nichols and Leonard Thompson, the veteran, at the other wide. Lomas Brown, Chris Dietrich, Steve Mott, Keith Dorney, Rich Stringer, and David Lewis, the tight end. The injury racks Detroit Lions, been a huge part of their story, and makes it all the more remarkable that they have seven victories. 30 players have been on injured reserve at one time or another this year. 18 are on now. Ferguson on first down complete. A short one for a gain of about three yards to Leonard Thompson. And that limbers the arm of the 35-year-old Joe Ferguson. The Bears defensively will start Dan Hampton, Steve McMichael, William the Refrigerator Perry, and Richard Dent. The linebackers, Otis Wilson and Mike Singletary bound for the Pro Bowl. Wilbur Marshall on the right side. Mike Richardson, Leslie Frazier on the corners, Dewerson and Fence at the safeties. The Bears with eight Pro Bowlers this year is selected by their peers and coaching staffs around the NFL. Second down and seven. Lions at their own 25. The protection for Ferguson. A diving catch on the sideline by Thompson again, and he has the first down yardage. Number 39, the 11-year man from Oklahoma State. Johnny, this wide receiver doesn't even get to practice. His knees are older than yours. <laughs> and that's getting pretty old. <laughs> but he hasn't practiced during the uh, week for the last month of the season, but he always comes up from some clutch catches as he did last week against Green Bay. However, the Lions did lose against Green Bay, but it looks like uh, the Lions are going to let it all hang out. The uh, first two plays, they've come out throwing. Ferguson is 29 of 51. Pass is coming into the season, working in relief of Eric Kippel. Hipple had his knee re-injured last week against Green Bay. Doctors advised against him going today. Play action on first down. Pressure from Perry. In and out of the hands of James Jones. Ferguson knocked flat as he released the ball. And he is down and looks as though he's taken. 
taken a real tough shot. Apparently, Wilbur Marshall, the man to make contact. It was number 72, William Perry, the refrigerator, who got through and put the pressure on Ferguson and drove him out of the pocket. So Ferguson was on the run, and you're going to see Wilbur Marshall come here and really flatten him. Oh, boy, did he really hit him. And down is Ferguson, and the Lions are in some trouble at quarterback because uh, Eric Hipple has a sore knee, but it looks like... Uh, are they looking at his shoulder? Boy, that was a real hit. Well, it looked like he took the shot on the chest, but he also appeared to bang the back of his head when he hit the artificial turf here. A Joe knockout Ferguson. blow. Yes, a 13-year veteran. He's had a few blows in his life, but the helmet was right in there. Did you notice the helmet was right in there, and then his head did bounce off the turf, and uh, he is really sore. In fact, I think they're checking in the neck area also. And there's Eric Hippo, who... Uh, no, that's not Hippo. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, there. there's Hippo. Yeah. Eric Hippo uh, actually uh, passing back and forth with Hunter Mike Black, who would be the emergency quarterback. Black works the uh, scout team quarterbacking duties for the Lions. And Eric Hippo, uh, who uh, in uniform with a strained knee, uh, will no doubt be coming in here. And so early misfortune for the Lions as he talks it over with head coach Darrell Rogers. We'll return to the Silver Dome in a moment. Well, the very best news we can bring you at the moment is that Joe Ferguson is sitting up and getting up. And it was a scary moment there because they were quite properly being very cautious with him. And Joe looks like he's woozy, obviously, and no doubt sore, but evidently all right, leaving the field under his own steam. It was a terrific hit by Wilbur Marshall, and I think in a lot of uh, officials might have ruled that he used the crown of his helmet when he made contact and could have been penalized. Okay, let's take a look at it. Now, notice as uh, Marshall comes in, then his helmet hits him right in the chest, and down he went, and then there was the bang of the head, so uh, it's hard to tell which part of the tackle uh, injured him. The pass play you may have forgotten was an incompleted pass. James Jones failed to hold on to it, and Hipple on second and ten. Picks up about three. James Jones stopped by Wilson, and it'll leave third and seven for the Lions. Otis Wilson headed to the Pro Bowl and uh, thinking uh, mainly about the Super Bowl at the moment. Has been injured on that play slightly, evidently, and he goes off. Reggie Phillips has come in to give them an extra defensive back on third down. reaching around to get a hand on it. Manley unhappy about not getting an interference call and support from the Silverdome crowd. Well, it was a very close call. You be the judge as the ball arrives and Fensick goes over the top and uh, somewhat kind of grabbed with one hand as he reached over and the Lion fans are a little upset about the call. Was contact made? It looked like there was some contact before the ball got there, but a very close call. The Lions are going to be forced to punt. Black, the punter, stands at his own 22. The deep man for the Bears is rookie Keith Portigo. Waiting for it at the Chicago 20-yard line. Black just got it away against the good Bears rush. Portigo from the 13. Good piece of running by the rookie over the 35-yard line. June James made the stop defensively for the Detroit Lions. And the Bears will bring out Jim McMahon at quarterback. Walter Payton. Some speculation he might not start this week, but he's there. Matt Suey with him. McKinnon and Galt, the wide receivers. Jim Colbert headed to the Pro Bowl. Mark Bortz, Jay Hilgenberg, another Pro Bowl selection. Tom Thayer, Keith Van Horn, and Emery Moorhead. You know, one thing you mentioned that uh, we talked about Daryl Rogers, this lasting impression, and it really is important to a football player because I know the coaches look at the last game for the whole next year. And that's enough inspiration to, to make a guy play well. And he's made that very clear. He told us he enunciated that to his team during the week at practice. Jim McMahon brings him out. A play is complete to the tight end. Moorhead for a first down. At the 49-yard line of the Bears. Some conversation between uh, Van Horn and a couple of the Lions in the Bears' backfield. Defensively, the Lions have Keith Ferguson acquired on waivers from San Diego. Curtis Green has moved to the nose, replacing the injured Eric Williams and Doug English, and William Gay on the right end. Williams, Fantetti, Curley, and Angelo King are the linebackers. 
And the secondary, one of the few units that's been able to stay together without injury all season, Watkins, McNorton, Demetrius Johnson, and William Graham. First down, Chicago on the 13-yard gain to Moorhead. Unusual formation here on first down. The pass intended for Galt. Good defensive play by Bobby Watkins, diving in and batting the ball away from Willie Galt. Yeah, that was an interesting information uh, formation because the Bears had nobody in the backfield. Both backs were up on the wing trying to get strictly man-for-man -man situations, and Watkins makes a good play on Willie Galt as uh, you can see the ball coming right into your front room, and here comes Watkins to bat the ball away. Watkins with four interceptions on the season, the leader in that department for the Lions. He's had a very steady year on the corner. Not a big guy, 5'10", 185-pounder, and he's been getting the job done. Second and ten. Rush has been the weakness for the Lions. Walter Payton's first carry. Good for close to five yards behind the left guard. And there is Joe Ferguson. Our word on him is that it was a head injury and uh, uh, obviously uh, not too serious or he would still be receiving more attention. But uh, he looks even now a little bit groggy. Well, you could tell from that little breath of air that he blew out he's, he had his cobweb shaken if he wasn't waked up before this game he's waked up now <laughs> it is third down a little more than five yards to go Chicago in Detroit territory for the first time and under pressure Walter Payton out of bounds at the Lions 17 yard line 30-yard gain, McMahon to Walter Payton. And Angelo King, number 92, is the guy that's responsible. He's at the bottom right of your screen to cover Payton out of the backfield. He gives him a little dipsy do and gets a step on him, and that's a pretty tough job for a linebacker. And then Payton heads for the sideline and is finally knocked out of bounds. As It looks like uh, they talked about all the bumps and bruises. Walter just cruised out of bounds there, but I think he's okay. <laughs> well, the one that uh, I guess was bothering the most was kind of a jammed neck, they called it, from uh, last week's action against the Jets. But uh, he's got bumps and bruises all over his body. First down, Chicago. Here comes the linebacker, Williams, with a sack on the pan. Jimmy Williams and a lot of Lions supporters thought he should be headed to the Pro Bowl. He's had an outstanding year. And he will come from the left side of your screen. Nobody blocks him. A clear shot as McMahon's looking the other way. He had no chance. Jimmy Williams, and you're right, he was one of the Lions who, who really had a legitimate shot at making uh, the Pro Bowl squad, but there's been so many strong linebackers uh, this year. They didn't make it. No Lions made it. Uh, Keith Dorney is another one that many felt should have had a shot at it. Jimmy Williams. Seven and a half sacks on the season for Williams from that outside spot. And he came into the game with 84 tackles. Loss of five, second and 15. The ball back at the 22. Flags are down. The pass complete to Peyton. And Peyton inside the 10. Short of a first down. But a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. William Graham and Demetrius Johnson combined to stop Peyton. Pick up of 12. Well, it looked like the Lions jumped too soon. Uh, Jim McMahon has a knack that has been successful throughout the season of the way he staggers his cadence. He draws teams offsides maybe two or three times in the first half before they get used to it. Defense, right side of the line, offside, decline, third down. Referee Fred Silva with the call, and... The Bears will have third and three at the 10-yard line of the Lions opening offensive series. And if you recall, the Bears ran, ran, ran against the Lions earlier this season, uh, running right against that 3-4 defense. Now they're throw, throw, throw. So Mike Ditka wants to get that passing game back in the group before the playoffs begin. They had 250 yards on 55 rushes in that first victory over Detroit earlier this year. Peyton in motion. Matt Suey tackle picks up two maybe three yards he'll be close to the first down yardage Ken Fantetti on the tackle an early score from the game at New England the Patriots on top of Cincinnati three nothing in the first period and the Patriots still alive in the AFC playoff picture we'll keep 
you up to date on those key scores in the AFC. And of course, later today, Dallas and San Francisco, the 49ers trying to get their opportunity to win a second Super Bowl via the wild card route. And Dallas playing for the home field. Here comes Kevin Butler from the 15 yard line. And Butler has put the Chicago Bears on the scoreboard from 25 yards away. And for Butler, his 13th field goal in a row. 29th on the season. He has had an outstanding year, the rookie from Georgia. And here was his reaction, the old headbutt with his own hands, Kevin <laughs> Butler. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris at the Silverdome in Pontiac. Kevin Butler with that field goal now has 134 points on the season. And that breaks the Bears record held by the great Gale Sayer, the running back. Imagine that with 132 points. But Kevin Butler is now the Bear record holder for points in the season. And his kickoff taken at the goal line by Alvin Hall. Over the 30 to the 31. Jim Morrissey on the tackle. Alvin Hall coming into the game with an average of 21.7 yards a return on the kickoffs. He's a good one, and that one good for 29. And here are some uh, standings. The Well, not the standings. We're going to give you the scores. New England 3 to nothing over Cincinnati. That has AFC East implications all over the board as far as New England's situation. Miami has the lead over Buffalo 7 nothing first quarter. And Kansas City leads San Diego 7 nothing first quarter. Kipple continues at quarterback for the Lions. First down from their own 31-yard line. Blitz intended for Bland. Tipped and almost picked off. Tipped by Leslie Frazier. Almost caught on the diving try by Fensick. And the pressure came from Mike Singletary on Eric Kipple. Uh, it was even more than pressure, Tim. Or as we're going to take a look at, if you can look at the top of your screen, too, I don't know if we'll see Hipple take a shot from Singletary, but here's the knockaway by Les Frazier, and Gary Fensick almost came up with his 36th career interception. And the Lions have got to be concerned about protecting Hipple with that bad knee. It is very tender, and uh, some wonder whether he should even be playing uh, this last football game. Play action, and he is set. Marshall. Number 58, Wilbur Marshall. Marshall's sixth sack of the season. And he comes inside of uh, a David Lewis to make this, uh, this tackle as Hipple just really has no time to set up. There was pressure from both sides, and he really took a shot from Wilbur Marshall, who came to play on this final football game of the season, or at least regular season. A man who was thrust into the limelight uh, with the holdout of Al Harris who never did come back to the team. Wilbur Marshall has responded and improved as each game has come along. Three wide receivers, and that's all the Lions have in the lineup with the injury to Mark Nichols, placing him on injured reserve. Up the middle of the car, Bland. First down, Lions. Twenty-yard gain to Carl Bland, the rookie from Virginia Union, actually a second-year man who was on injured reserve last year, so it's his rookie season. He had seven catches last week against Green Bay. And he was telling us the other day uh, that he likes to come underneath. He's not afraid to come over the middle and catch that ball, and uh, he meant what he said. He caught seven, as you said, last week, and for a guy that was cut a couple of times, uh, finally getting his shot, it's kind of kind of nice to see him do well because he's gone through a rough year. 182-pounder. Play action. Deep. Thompson intercepted. Mike Richardson. Lomas Brown knocks him out of bounds, and he was well out of bounds when he got hit. 45-yard return. And you know, there are a lot of Bear fans in Pontiac, Michigan here today. Yes, there's a lot of noise and a pretty big crowd for a game that's supposed to be meaningless. Actually, Hippo underthrew the pass here. Richardson does a good job of making the interception, but you can see that Leonard Thompson was out there, but Richardson just made a beautiful uh, two-handed grab, snatched it right out of the air, and takes it back up the field and almost broke that ball. And the Bears are blessed with defensive backs who can run after they make the interception. Finally, Lomas Brown hits him. 
gives him a little shove. Fourth interception of the season for Mike Richardson. And the Bears in Lions territory at the 40-yard line. Short drop by McMahon. Out of the backfield, Suey hit immediately. Good defensive reaction by the Lions. Suey dropped by Angelo King, the linebacker number 92. King came to the Lions in a deal from Detroit from Dallas the last year. Out of South Carolina State, became a starter under Daryl Rogers and defensive coordinator Wayne Fonts. Tried him inside one time during this season, but uh, decided he's more effective out where he is. Gain of two, second and eight. Bears at the Lions, 38. Short of the first down, but a gain of close to eight. Graham and Williams on the tackle. And as you recall, it was Matt Suey gained 100 yards, over 100 yards, along with Peyton against the Lions, with a lot of runs just like that right up the middle in one of his uh, best games of the year. But did you notice, did you hear the pop into the pads? The Lions are still hitting. They're, they're playing this game. They're playing hard. Third down and a yard as we see the Jets have taken a field goal lead over Cleveland in that critical game. The Browns, remember, are in thanks to Pittsburgh's loss yesterday. Cincinnati and New England now tied at three all. The Browns are the Central Division champs. On the try for first down, it would appear they have it. Matsui, yes, inside the 30. They'll spot it at the 29-yard line of the Lions and the Bears, who already lead on a 3-0 uh, uh, field goal by Kevin Butler giving them a 3-0 lead, are now threatening again at the 29 of Detroit. Mike Richardson's interception and a 45-yard return has them in scoring position. Slot formation left. McKinnon in the slot. Wide out is Willie Gulp. On first down, they swing it to Suey. And again, good defensive reaction. Only the tight end, Reitman, over there to block for Suey. And the Lions came up three abreast and held him to a gain of under two. William Gay with the tackle. Well, they giving him about a yard and a half on the play. The ball is now at the 27-yard line of the Lions. Bears in front, three to nothing. 4.54 remaining in the first quarter at the Silver Dome. And man off to a nifty start. Five out of six for 59 yards. Sideliner to golf. That's off target incomplete. Third down. The Bears are using uh, Walter Payton in motion much more in this game than they have in previous games. So the Chicago Bears always seem to, Mike Ditka comes up with a new wrinkle in formations or this for every game. He feels that's important to, uh, to uh, kind of uh, shake up a defensive team because they look at game films from the previous couple of games and when you see new formations, even though they may be the same place, it can be disconcerting. Four down linemen now for the Lions. Steve Bach is in defensively and Dennis Gentry comes in. He's become kind of a third down figure for the Bears over the last several weeks. They've been throwing the ball to him and trying to get it to him on the third down pass plays. sack and Curtis Green the man to get it playing on the nose with Keith Ferguson right there with him number 77 uh, I think it was Curtis Green who got there first he's number 62 he gets by there Mike Mark Bortz puts the hit on McMahon and then Ferguson comes in and cleans up as a good pass rush out of the Detroit Lions and Curtis Green and uh, Ferguson was a pretty good pickup for the Lions wasn't he he sure was and he let him go for zip it's hard to believe he's been very happy with him Butler from 51 yards away, his long of the season, 46. No good. Butler has his streak broken as he tried to connect from 51 yards away. No wind in his face, but that's a pretty good boot anyway. And so his streak is broken. At 13 consecutive field goals in 1985, the rookie from Georgia 
Correct. And the Lions will take over at their own 33-yard line, having stopped the Bears on the second offensive series for Chicago. We'll return in a moment. Sets here at home, beating uh, the likes of Dallas and Miami and the Jets, San Francisco. On the road, a little different story. James Jones breaks loose. Jones for a first down to the 45-yard line of the Detroit Lions. A nice draw play, and you notice the linebackers are all inside for the Chicago Bears, but the Lions still beat it. Henry Rachter, number 70, had a shot at Jones right there as he leaped for him, couldn't get him, and Jones busted to the outside, made a nice gain for the Detroit Lions. And Jones has been one of those players that's been steady all year. 12-yard gain. Wachter came in defensively on this series, replacing Steve McMichael, who has a sprained knee. McMichael started, but the Bears indicated that they would not give him a whole lot of work today unless they have to. On first down, hit ball, and it is incomplete, overthrowing the intended receiver, Leonard Thompson, number 39. Deep on the coverage with him was Mike Richardson. Richardson with one intercept already. Eric Kipple's had some big days with the long passes. Remember, in 1981, he made his debut against the Bears, and I think he threw four touchdown passes. Yes, he did. What a night that was. He's a very streaky type of quarterback. Last week was was not so hot with the three interceptions. Joe Ferguson finished up threw a touchdown pass to Leonard Thompson that brought the Lions back into a tie, but they wound up losing on the field goal by Green Bay. Hipple one for five, 21 yards so far today, coming in in relief of Joe Ferguson. Drop play to Jones. This time the Bears are waiting for it, and he is dropped. Otis Wilson and talking with Otis yesterday is really thrilled that he's on the Pro Bowl squad but asking him about James Jones he said I expect to see a lot of him he said I know that I'll be involved in covering him on some passes and and I expect to be uh, be tracking him when he runs the ball they have a lot of respect for James Jones as Otis goes out in the third and long passing situations Reggie Phillips comes into the game so the Bears have five defensive backs it is third down and ten wide receivers in for the Lions. Pressure on Heppel. Hangs in there, but overthrows Manley. Mensick had the coverage on Manley. And so the Lions are forced to punt. Here at Kippel, uh, you know, you could tell that he, he wanted to play, and as all competitors do, and, and chatting with him yesterday, but he said, you know, the, the doctor does say that things will heal up real well if I don't get another shot on this knee. And of course, this being the last game, the Lions are out of it. Uh, that was the decision made by Darrell Rodgers and the doctor to start Joe Ferguson. But with Ferguson literally knocked out on the first offensive series, Hipple has to go. Mike Black hits it from his 35. Keith Ortigo signals fair catch at the Bears 20 yard line. 2.22 remaining in the first period at the Silverdome. The Chicago Bears three, the Detroit Lions nothing. Well, he didn't make the Pro Bowl. Many thought he should have. One of the outstanding tackles in the NFL. Came off the field a little rubbery legged. Apparently got hit in the head in the last series. And that's, now uh, looks like he's okay. That's from playing guard. <laughs> he's had to move in and learn a new position. And he's done it well. Jim McMahon brings out the Bears. First down from their own 20-yard line. Green set up to Peyton. A block from Thayer. Forced out of bounds. A gain of seven for Walter Payton as he's knocked out by Angelo King. And the Browns have moved ahead of the Jets 7-3 on a 37-yard punt return. And the Jets, of course, need that victory. Cleveland already in. New England 10-3 uh, over Cincinnati. That's a first quarter score. And, of course, that's a big game for New England, not for Cincinnati. Miami has the lead over Buffalo, 7-0 second quarter. That's down in Miami, so the Dolphins are looking pretty golden. Atlanta leads New Orleans 3-0 in a game that means what? Not <laughs> much. Philadelphia and Minnesota, 7-7 <laughs> first quarter. Peyton's got three passes for 50 yards already. Tries to run, drop the ball. Demetrius Johnson, number 21, with a fumble recovery. And Angelo King apparently was the man who 
stripped it loose. We'll take a look here. And he caught the play from behind. You're going to see him from 92. Comes there and hits him from behind and jolts the ball loose. And then it's up for grabs. And you can see Demetrius Johnson, number 21, recovers for the Lions, who are tough to beat in the Silverdome. So at the 34-yard line of the Bears, the Lions get some field position. And this is how they won those games earlier in the year here at the Silverdome, forcing turnovers in their opponent's territory and then getting it into the end zone. Jones with flags down, picks up about three, close to the 30-yard line where Otis Wilson meets him. James Jones with 812 yards rushing and 1,145 yards of total offense because he's caught 44 passes for the Lions. Defense, left side of the line, offside. Five yards, first down. So Fred Silva assesses the five-yard offside penalty against Chicago. And it'll be first and five, Detroit. You know, Walter Payton fumbled that ball. You know, he's had a sore elbow and it could have a lot to do with how he's carrying the ball. In fact, he took acupuncture treatment for it this week. Just among the many uh, injuries that he's carrying around with him on his body out there today. First and five. Sideliner, intended for Thompson. Leslie Frazier on the coverage. Thompson, curious, saying, hey, he's hanging all over my neck. We'll see if he is hanging all over his neck as the Bear Pass West put some pressure on, but Hippo was able to get it away. And let's take a look as Leonard Thompson, well, he had his hand up on his shoulder, whether they want to call that interference or not. They did, but he is mad. <laughs> well, again, you see the fire here on the yeah. part of the Lions. Well, I don't think Leonard That's had pretty that. Tough to, yeah. It's pretty tough to call it yeah, interference. It's down from behind by Singletary but you saw the strength of James Jones dragging Singletary for four yards. And you saw the strength of Singletary too because uh, Lomas Brown was blocking on him. He went right through the block and made the tackle. Heck of a play by Mike Singletary. That's all, man. Just watch that. That's all. Because they do it. If you come in that must be Leonard Thompson. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> I can see him now. I heard that voice, obviously uh, complaining to an official, and it was Thompson on the sideline. There he is, Let's number go, 39. Line. He's still hot about that non-call. Hipple yep. is one out of seven at this point. Third down, less than a yard. And Alvin Moore will be close to the first down, depending on the spot. We'll have to wait on that one. Wilson and Dent collide with Alvin Moore, number 24. And what a block by Chris Diedrich as he was pulling over. I think it was, uh, uh, can't, was it Singletary he collided with and threw a great block to allow enough yardage that appears for the first down. It's very close, though. Out comes the chain gang to get the measurement. Time winding down in the first quarter here at the Silver Dome with the Ooh, it's not Bears quite on there. top. And it is just short. And on comes Eddie Murray attempt the field goal. Like Kevin Butler, he has had an outstanding year kicking the football. 25 of 29, 11 in a row for a Lions record. Well, some of the fans are booing, thinking, hey, this is the last game of the year. Why don't you go for it? A 42-yard field goal is not automatic. If you can't make a fourth down in inches, uh, what the heck? Nickel holding. And Murray does his job. Knotted things up here with 19 seconds remaining in the first period. And the young man from Victoria, British Columbia, raised in the uh, eastern part of Canada. As a matter of fact, I know this game is being seen on our Seattle affiliate. And Eddie Murray uh, said, hey, why not say hello to my family up there in Victoria and say Merry Christmas to them. And that's a good excuse for me to do the same. And my mother and sister also live in Victoria. So to the Murrays and the Ryans, Merry Christmas. He didn't say, why not? He says, you better guys better do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, we've got lots of important football ahead today on CBS Sports. At the conclusion of this game, the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers. The 49ers who want to defend that Super Bowl title 
have to win today to get in there. Here's the circumstance. Next weekend, the Giants, who beat Pittsburgh yesterday, they now know they're in on a wild card. They know they're the home team, and they will meet either the 49ers or the Redskins. Redskins did their job yesterday with a victory over St. Louis. However, they need a loss by the 49ers to make it. And that game is a little important to Dallas, too, isn't it? Because of a uh, home field advantage. Uh, I'm talking about the Dallas 49ers. That's game. right. If Dallas can win, and if the Rams lose on Monday night against the Raiders, then uh, Dallas would have the home game for their first uh, playoff effort. So we have a 3-3 game thanks to this young man, Eddie Murray, and he will kick it off. Special team unit. I can't be too happy about that. Gale and Gentry were kind of looking at each other, and Galt ran right into the traffic there. Nobody picked up a, a, a lion tackler, and he was hit. Well, I think maybe they might have been surprised because Galt was almost over to the sidelines and decided to return that. It was a looked like it was a return left or right from the left side, and those usually don't don't work. But that one didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he got just short of the 20-yard line. 3-3, the football score here at the Silverdome in Pontiac and the Bears with first down. Calvin Thomas is in. Thomas in for Suey. Play action. Lots of time at man. Intended for McKinnon. To the Lions' 42-yard line. A 37-yard gain and a first down. McNorton and Graham pull him down. And the gun sounds ending the first period here at the Silver Dome with McMahon connecting to McKinnon. And we'll be back with the score. The Bears three, the Lions three. Weeks ago when their Lions were still alive and facing the Bears with only one defeat on their record. And yet uh, not as many no-shows as I expected in this blustery weather today. Big crowd. McMahon complete to Reitman. Reitman gets by one man and Reitman blasts his way to the 25-yard line. Another Bears first down on the 18-yard gain to Tim Reitman, the rookie from UCLA in the USFL. A uh, nice play action by McMahon, and you're going to see Reitman put on a pretty good move here as uh, McMahon rolls out one way, and here comes Reitman, and he puts a move on August Curley, number 50 here. Here's the big man, 240 pounds, and he just dekes him right out, and then it takes about six Lions to bring him down. Tim Reitman, that time he decided to run over somebody. He doesn't do that... Uh, the, the Deacon too much, and the Jimmy Williams and a host of Lions knock him down. He's averaging 17 yards per catch. Pretty good for a slow tight end, isn't That's it? That's right. He had four of them against the Jets last week, and a timeout called by the Bears. They didn't like something they saw presented to them by the Lions. Bears had 109 yards of total offense in the first period to only 48 for the Lions. Well, as they discuss things on the sideline, it gives us a chance to remind you about our activities on Christmas Day here on CBS Sports. College football features the Blue-Gray Game, the all-star football classic from Montgomery, Alabama. Some of the top seniors you'll be watching, Navy's Napoleon McCallum and Notre Dame's Alan Pinkett. Buffalo Bills coach Hank Bullock called uh, that Bonaparte guy at Navy, Napoleon McCallum. At least he was quoted as saying that. And the NBA returns as Larry Bird. Bill Walton and the Boston Celtics visit Patrick Ewing and the New York Knicks. That's Christmas Day here on CBS Sports. The baskets at 3.30 Eastern time. Well, the Jets in front of Cleveland, 10 to 7. Ken O'Brien to Kurt Sohn. The Jets needing a victory there today. New England also in a critical game for them. Ahead of Cincinnati, 10-3 in the second period. And Miami at home against Buffalo, 7 to nothing. If Miami can win that game over the Bills, they will clinch the AFC East title. And there's the way that picture looks. New England and the Jets going into today's action at 10 and 5. Kansas City in front of San Diego, 14 to 3 in the second period. And the Eagles of Minnesota still tied up at 7-7. That game has one interesting situation involving the Bears and we'll come back to it and develop it as the scores come into us from Minnesota. First down Chicago at the 25 yard line. Little collision with Peyton with McMahon. Oh what a catch on the interception by Bobby Watkins. Intended for Reitman a diving interception by 
Bobby Watkins. His fifth interception of the year. The Bears messed up the uh, fake of the handoff. You're going to see uh, Peyton collide with McMahon, and then McMahon got clear, and he could have run up the field, but at the last second, he decided to throw that pass. He thought Reitman was open, and Watkins just made a super play. He's had a good year. The cornerbacks have done very well for the Lions, even though the Lion defense is not rated very high. Bobby Watkins. So the Lions stopped the Bears, who were driving. And with the score still at 3-3, they take over at their own eight-yard line. Just underway in the second quarter at the Silverdome. Up the middle, Alvin Moore, and he crawls for a couple of extra over the 10 to the 11-yard line, but they'll spot it down right on the 10. Richard Dent and William Perry made sure he got no farther. It'll be second and eight for the Lions. Hey, Mama. So there's Bobby. Hey, <laughs> Well, he came to play. And, uh, and McNorton, McNorton, he's done well, too. They've become a very steady pair. Uh, defensively, everybody knows the Lions really had problems against the, the run. They were last in that category and last overall. Last defense has been all right. Jones picks up a couple more. And it'll leave a third down and five for the Lions. James Jones. Well, so far you can see McMahon been razor sharp, eight of eleven. Hipple's had a couple of drops and a couple of bad throws. Uh, one way some of the teams have been getting to the Bears a little bit are on the rollout type of pass, but Hippo with that bad knee, you wouldn't think he would call too many uh, rollouts, and that has to be a detriment to the Lions because that's where the Bears have been vulnerable the past few games. Well, Hippo changing up something here on the third down. their 45-yard line, a 33-yard play. Looked like he changed this one up, Johnny. He certainly did. He called the audible. You can see the linebacker, Wilbur Marshall, 58, going, and he has to uh, try and end up with the coverage, and the only other help is for Gary Fency to come over from his free safety spot, and both people had a tough job there. Marshall trying to cover the man in motion, and Fency trying to get over and help out. So the Lions uh, took advantage of the Bears on that situation, and you got to give Hipple some credit. He came up with a smart play. He called the checkoff and uh, took advantage of the Bear defense. Pete Manley, the second-year man from Northern Arizona, getting steadily better after a disappointing rookie year. And he made the big play there. First down, Lions. Draw play to Moore. And he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Henry Wachter playing for Steve McMichael. has got that bad knee. The Bears may have come up with a loose ball on that play. Yes, they have. Alvin Moore evidently coughed it up, and the Bears have recovered. Tough break for the Lions, having just made the big play to get out of their own end of, after Watkins' intercept. They give it back to the Bears. Singletary came up with a loose ball. That's very tough to run a draw play against the type of defense that the Bears will give you. With all those big guys rushing and the blitzing linebackers, you can see Singletary 50 comes in and jams it up. And... Uh, uh, he's uh, fighting. The ball comes out before he is down. The whistle had not blown. There it is, right there. And I believe that Singletary, he's found the ball. Now the Bears have it again in Lions territory at the 44. Peyton. Peyton for four, maybe five yards inside the 40 of the Lions where Keith Ferguson made the stop. This game means a little bit to Walter Payton. I believe he's 91 yards behind Gerald Riggs of Atlanta going in for the NFC uh, rushing title. And Riggs is injured. He's not supposed to be playing all that much for Atlanta. So Payton, if he could get up towards 100 yards, might win the NFC rushing title. He has 1,470 yards. He, so can, also, uh, he can also go over 2,000 in combined. And he's got 60 combined yards already in this game. Second down. Thomas, good defensive reaction by the Lions out the right side. Angelo King just battled off the blocker, and that was Mark Bortz. And then Bruce McNorton came up.
to make the tackle. That was very well played by Detroit. Yes, especially Angelo King. That was a super play. He had two bears right in his face. He uh, busted him up and still made the tackle. And uh, McNaughton came on to help out. Those Gentry comes in for Calvin Thomas now as Darrell Rogers got to be pleased with the effort he's seen here so far. And just that bad break turned the ball back to the Bears. But it's a 3-3 football game. 10-20 remaining first half. All out blitz. into a blitz and McMahon uh, checked off Willie Galt was supposed to run a quick post and he ran straight up the field and there was only one man there and that was McMor McMorton who was playing the quarterback and Willie Galt was still running down the field and uh, McNorton took it off towards the sideline he's still down on the field and uh, let's take a look at the hit that gets him here here is uh, Dennis McKinnon makes the tackle oh his leg got caught up there as uh, Hilgenberg also was in on the tackle it's McKinnon 85 with the initial hit. I don't think that one injured him. But it looked like he got his leg caught, his knee got twisted back there from the weight of uh, Jay Hilgenberg making the tackle. So the Lions will have the football as they continue to attend to McNaughton. will return with 10 over 9 remaining in the first half. His knee or his ankle, there's Kent Fogg, the trainer for 20 years of the Lions, uh, to his right as there was 15 yards tacked on because of Hilgenberg hitting late, so the Lions are in pretty good field position. First down, Lions, at the Bears' 47-yard line. Hipple gets some time and has his man, Leonard Thompson. And he has first down yardage before he's driven back by Richardson, an 11-yard gain. So Hipple, who started off a little slowly and was aided in his bad stat by a couple of drops, has got it cranked up. And look at this, Cleveland and the Jets, the Browns already in as the champions of the Central Division in the AFC, playing the Jets who need it, playing them real tough, 10-10. And New England, they need the win. They're ahead of Cincinnati, 10-6. The Bengals are out of the picture. Miami doing as expected. And a Buffalo at home. Land in motion. James Jones breaks a tackle and dives for a gain of close to eight yards. A flag down. It may have been a bear jumping early on the left side of their defensive front. It does appear to be against the Chicago Bears. Now, while they uh, mark this off, Fred Silva sorting it out. Uh, later report on Joe Ferguson, the Lions quarterback who started the game. Let's get the uh, left side of the line penalty. defense. Offside, five-yard penalty, still first down. First down and five for the Lions. Joe Ferguson, the word is, yes, he was out cold, knocked out like a boxer out there by Wilbur Marshall. There he is, apparently feeling better, but it's had a little bit of nausea, and they don't expect to, to put him back in. He is not uh, feeling real good, as you might imagine. First and five. So Hipple continues out there. He's playing with a bad knee. Moore, nowhere to go. Got maybe a yard. The refrigerator turned him inside, and Henry Wachter cleaned him up. Wachter, number 70. We mentioned playing for the injured Steve McMichael. He's a four-year man out of Nebraska who was cut and re-signed by the Bears, and kind of a handy man who does a good job when he gets to play. Yes, it's pretty hard to move the refrigerator back. You might be able to get by him one side or the other, but to move him back is very difficult. when the ball came down, so had he caught it, it would not have counted. Richardson had good cover. Richardson had the ball there, but it was out of bounds. It'll leave third down. Injury report on McNaughton. A bruised knee, and it's questionable whether he'll get back into the action. We'll pick up his uh, replacement. Could be perhaps uh, John Bostick or Dwayne Galloway, who was activated 
today by the uh, Lions uh, when uh, Mark Pickles went on to injured reserve. Third down. About four. Manley in motion. They got him. Otis Wilson with the sack. Number 55. And you're going to see Otis at the top of your screen. He just takes off number 55, and it's a little Alvin Moore who has to put the block on him. And 55 goes right over Moore and uh, makes the tackle. You didn't get a, too good of a chance to see that part of it right there, but it was Otis Wilson. Well, Eddie Murray is teeing up a 55-yarder. And Murray has a long of 51. He's got some leg, but it's wide to the right from Eddie Murray. So these two outstanding field goal kickers, Murray and Butler, haven't had the long ones today and both have missed from 50 yards or better. It was long enough. It, it was, was just a little bit off to the side and let's watch Eddie Murray. Still a 3-3 game. Just about any personal computer does a better... Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris reminding you that that contest begins at 12.30 Eastern time. Louisville and Kentucky should be quite a ball game on CBS Sports College Basketball next Saturday. The Bears have a first down at their own 36-yard line. 3-3 three, three the score here at the Silver Dog. Peyton trying to get loose. Driven out by Johnson after a gain of eight, maybe nine on the play. Walter Peyton out the right side. Got a good block from Mark Bortz leading the way, number 62. And Tom Thayer, as uh, Peyton showed his great running ability, he just uh, played his blocks and cut up the field. The best that ever was, in my opinion. Well, you've got a lot of company in that, Johnny Morris. And uh, part of the reason why I've got a lot of company is that these numbers speak for themselves. 14,779 yards in his career. Nine consecutive 100-yard games snapped last week by the Jets. Second and a yard, and Peyton has it. First down, Bears, to the 49-yard line of Chicago. Just a 3-3 game. You may be wondering why, if you joined us, that the Bears have not done better against a team that statistically is a little weak, to say the least, the Detroit Lions defensively. Well, they've turned the ball over three times. We've had two interceptions by Watkins and McDorton, and a fumble that was recovered by Demetrius Johnson of the Lions. And you can see here that... Uh, they just haven't been able to sustain any drives. And the two interceptions by McMahon were going to hurt his cause trying to beat the number one rated uh, quarterback in the NFC. He's second right now. Early action. Keith Ferguson and Keith Van Horn. A little eager to get at it. We'll see whether Van Horn had the false start. Offense, number 78. False start. Five yards. That's Van Horn. Keith Van Horn is 78. There you can see the movement too soon, and Ferguson does what a good defensive lineman is supposed to do. You see that, you go across and you make that contact. Four penalties to the Bears, none so far to the Lions. So uh, the Bears, uh, fine-tuning for the playoffs, have come up with four penalties and three turnovers here in the first half. Still 7.02 to play. Slot formation left. Watkins knocking it away from Walter Payton and Watkins did a good job seeing Payton come out of the backfield going deep that's not a real common route for Walter Payton and Watkins picked it up and stayed with him well they were hoping that they could maybe get a linebacker covering on Walter Payton as they've had in certain situations but Watkins showed the fact that he's a cornerback he could turn it on there and recover and uh, batted the ball away Bobby Watkins was pretty decent. It's just that Watkins was right there on the coverage. In fact, the pass was perfect, perfect. wasn't it? Yeah. It would have been perfect pass. Second down and 15. They make the draw. Screen pass for Suey. Suey for the first down. Bears fans here at the Silver Dome enjoy it. 
17-yard gain and determination by Suey. He could see the marker where he had to get for the first down out of the corner of his eye. Well, you could see the fake to Suey, and McMahon wanted to throw that screen sooner, but he couldn't because uh, Suey was a little bit tangled up. Now, 59, Jimmy Williams had a shot to get at him. Right here, you see 59, and uh, he breaks away from that tackle, and uh, Suey did this show some determination, got the first down for Chicago. He had to get by William Graham and August Curley, who were the men who knocked him off his pins, but he got to the first down marker at the 40-yard line of the Lions, Chicago first down. Suey. Another Bear first down. Now, in the last meeting between the Bears and the Lions, both Suey and Peyton rushed for more than 100 yards. And they're starting to go to that inside stuff again here. Well, sometimes you can do that against a 3-4 a defense. Uh, you get those linebackers out of there, and the Bears created a big hole. There was nobody between the nose man and the defensive end. And who happened to be William Gay on that play. And or Ferguson, extra, I should say. A few extra words for between uh, William Graham and Suey. Close to another bear first down. Would you like to see the center pull? That time it was a center pull, and he came out on the linebacker, and Suey came back across the grain. Watch the center, Jay Hilgenberg. He's 63. Now he'll come out here. He collides with Jimmy Williams, 59, creates the hook. Uh, Tim Reitman was down there blocking also as Suey gets more valuable yardage. Graham uh, made sure that he arrived at the point where Suey was stopped to get in his little extra lick. It is second at about a yard. Gerald Riggs, we note, is in the lineup for Atlanta today at New Orleans. He's just scored a touchdown to give Atlanta a 10-0 lead in that game. So we'll be trying to track his rushing stats for you if possible. Peyton. First down, and now there's your basic pileup. Everybody got into that one. Steve Bach. Made the contact on Peyton, and right behind him, the linebacker Ken Fantetti and Angelo King. Bach's been kind of an interesting story with all of the injuries these Lions have suffered. Bach, who used to be an offensive lineman, converted to defense, was just a backup, not getting a lot of playing time, a second-year man from Oregon. And uh, with the injuries to English and Eric Williams, suddenly Bach becomes the fourth down lineman, and he's done a real good job. Curtis Green, as we mentioned, had moved... Uh, to the nose tackle in their 3-4. And now Bach is in there on the 3-4 with Curtis Green out of the game. First down inside the 15 of the Lions. Suey again straight ahead. Gets a stand-up block from Thayer and dives down to the 10-yard line. About a four-yard pickup for Matt Suey. He's getting a lot of work on this drive. He's had six carries for 37 yards. There's Wayne Fonts. You saw the defensive coordinator for Detroit saying, let's stop these guys. Fonts is a good one. Sell it! Oh, what did he say? Did you hear it? I think he, he said, said you've got to sell it. Sell it! Yeah, oh, sell it. Sell he, it. He wants them to show them a look and make the Bears think that they're in a, a certain look that presumably they will adjust. Let's see if we can see if they do some jumping around. That's just a presumption on my part. he took from number 62 Curtis Green bounced off that but Green did his job Curtis Green is 62 he's playing off the block by uh, Hilgenberg and he's going to end up on the tackle he was drafted to the nose guard position because of those <laughs> we were talking to him yesterday uh, he said I didn't volunteer to play nose guard he said I was drafted by the coach so he's making the best of it because nose guard is not a very in a 3-4 defense, you're going to get battered around in there, and he's done a good job in there. Uh, he's, he was a defensive end, and that's what he'd prefer to play. Maybe tackle in a four-man front, but not the nose. But he's been doing the job. 260 pounds. Peyton pulled down from behind by Ferguson. Keith Ferguson, number 77. Good quickness. And there'll be a loss of maybe a yard. Yes, where they spot it. He got over the block by Keith Van Horn. Van Horn is 78. Look at over the other side of your screen. Uh, you probably won't get too good of a view. You might there. Anyway, he gets over the block, and 77 puts the clamps on Peyton before he could really get going. So the Bears are going to be forced to go for the field goal. 
Uh, credit the Lions defensively again as they've stopped this bare drive. They had 12 plays on the drive, but they'll have to go for the field goal when they return. So the Bears will have a field goal try momentarily, and uh, we're, we've had the two-minute warning. That means very soon you'll be joining the NFL today from our studios in New York. Brent Musburger and Giants linebacker Harry Carson will be Brent's special guest. They'll have scores and highlights for you and a special feature on the grand old men of the NFL, the likes of Jeff Van Note of the Falcons, John Riggins of the Redskins, and other old-timers who are still hanging in there in the NFL. Irv Cross will have the action and the information on our grand old men of the NFL. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here at the Silver Dome where the Lions have been able to bend but not break and that's why this score is 3-3 and the Bears with three turnovers have hurt their own cause with two minutes to play here in the first half. Kevin Butler will attempt his second field goal and they'll spot it at the 14-yard line for a 24-yard try. Rookie from Georgia has been pretty much Mr. Automatic all season long with many but the longest. And he's got that one. So Chicago goes back on top as we have 157 remaining in the first half of play as the Bears try to match the 49ers 15 and 1 mark of a year ago for a 16 game NFL season. 6 to 3, Chicago. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris at the sold out Silver Dome. Sold out two weeks ago and Johnny you and I are uh, a little surprised to think uh, that there are more no shows here especially with the bad weather and the fact the Lions are out so I think a combination of loyal Lions fans a goodly number of Bears fans and a lot of people who want to see this exciting Bears football team. From the goal line it is A.J. Jones over the 25 to the 26 yard line. Jim Morrissey made the tackle. The 26-yard return for A.J. Jones. Picked up on waivers from the Rams. Don't forget, following our telecast, the Cowboys and the 49ers, the Super Bowl champions, need to win. If they do, they will be another wild card in the NFC along with the Giants and will visit the Meadowlands to play the Giants. If they lose, Washington will be there at the Meadowlands. What's at stake for Dallas today? Well, Possibly the home field advantage. If they can win and the Rams lose Monday night against the Raiders, then Dallas will be playing at home in their first playoff game. So a very important contest still to follow on CBS. First down. Lions. A couple of quarterback to Jones. James Jones. Barreling out in James Jones fashion. You know, if we see the talent of James Jones here, Johnny, and you think about Billy Sims and Wilbert Montgomery on the sidelines, Sims for the entire year. Montgomery saw a little action when he came over from Philadelphia before he went on injured reserve. I mean, if they had those three guys healthy, it'd be a little different season here. They certainly would. Second down and a long four. The ball complete. Bland made the catch with... Frazier draped all over him. Good effort, again, by the youngster from Virginia Union. They call him Yo-Yo, his teammates do, because he was cut twice, signed three times all in one season by the Lions. You know, the thing that impressed me most was the fact that he said yesterday, he told me, I like to go over the middle best. Yeah. I, I've never seen a wide receiver would choose that kind of pattern <laughs> first. First down, Lions. Blitz all out. Richard Dent made first contact with him, it appeared. Spun him around, and two more Bears arrived for their third sack of the afternoon. Hampton and Wilson. Here's Otis Wilson, who just loves to blitz. He comes from one side. Richard Dent comes from the other side. Dan Hampton up the middle, and it was Dent, 95, that got there first. But you have to give him about three quarters of a sack and a, a quarter or an eighth to a couple of other guys. Dewerson, 22, came right over the top of Alvin Moore. And here comes Hampton up the middle. There you see the monsters of the midway and what that term means because they look like monsters coming through. And they quickly called a timeout, the Chicago Bears did, because they feel now that they can stop the Lions and maybe get the ball back and uh, uh, tack on a field goal before halftime. 43 seconds remains. They have one timeout left, Chicago does. And uh, while we've got this one, let's take a quick look at the action in the AFC. The Jets in Cleveland, the Browns playing those Jets tough. 17 to 10 in the second period. 
New England 20 to 6 at halftime. The Patriots doing their job against Cincinnati. The Bengals out of it. Patriots still hoping to be there. Kansas City ahead of uh, San Diego 28 to 3. And the Tampa Bay in front of Green Bay 10 to 7. Philadelphia has now moved ahead of Minnesota 24 to 7 in the second period. Remember the last time they played Philadelphia was at what 23 nothing and Minnesota came back to beat them. Atlanta leads New Orleans 10 nothing. So it is second and about 20 for the Lions here with 43 seconds to go. Pressure again from Marshall. Ball downfield for Thompson and incomplete. Nearly got it on the tip. Defending was Leslie Frazier. Good concentration by Thompson, but he couldn't quite get his hands on the ball after it popped up. And Hipple took another hit. And here's the isolation as the Bears came out of that 46 and put the all-out blitz on once again. And it's Frazier on Thompson, basically man-to-man -man situation. And Hipple did a good job of just getting the ball out. And, uh, boy, he almost grabbed that off the rebound, didn't he? Watch Hipple. He's going to take punishment as 55 and 58. Wilbur Marshall both came out of that 46 defense and he got rid of the ball in time. Usually one or the other of those two linebackers would drop off. That time they went with both of them. It is third down. Draw play, and the Bears come up with the football. James Jones coughed it up, and Richard Dent has it for the Bears with 30 seconds still to play in the first half. Well, they went to the draw play on third and long, but Richard Dent was waiting for it. Well, they actually figured this was going to be the uh, the safest play. Perry made As the tackle. William Perry made the initial tackle, and 95 Richard Dent made the recovery. They didn't want to throw down into that bear zone. Here comes a, a Dent down the line. There, he's coming down the line, and when the ball is stripped loose, he picks it up and beats Jones to the ball. So the Lions cough it up here in dangerous territory. 30 seconds still to play, and Chicago with a first down at Detroit's 26. The turnovers are now even. McKinnon, Galt, and Marjoram, three wide receivers on first down. Out of the shotgun. The man starts to run up. He locks the ball. Looks like the Bears have recovered, but let's wait and see. It is Chicago ball. Hilgenberg, the center, number 63, as McMahon waving that ball around in the pocket suddenly was jolted, and away it went. It was a great diving uh, save for Jay Hilgenberg. He's 63 as, as uh, McMahon comes up in the pocket, can't find him, but he starts to take off, and the ball is batted away. And now Hilgenberg, watch him. He's 63, and he's the one that's going to end up and uh, get the ball as he uh, dives in there and the ball just kind of scoots under. He says, look, Ma, what I got. He got it with one arm, and the Bears now going to go right for the field goal. They have 10 seconds to play. They took their final timeout. Kevin Butler is out there, ready to give it another shot. Butler missing from 51 yards on his last try and hit 13 in a row, including one here today, 25 yards out. And then he picked up his second of the afternoon for 24. A lot of people felt he should have made the Pro Bowl team with the way he's kicked this year for Chicago. Uh, rookie uh, kicker is the fumble. Ball goes back to the original fumble. Okay, the ruling on that was that in the last two minutes, another player cannot recover a fumble that goes forward, so it goes back to the original point of the fumble. That's the old uh, Kenny Stabler thing where a quarterback can roll the ball forward and somebody else can recover. So it's going to make a little bit longer field goal attempt for Kevin Butler. Well, they'll spot it just outside the 40, so it'll be a 50-yard attempt. Now, Butler missed from 51 yards, kicking the other way. Let's see if the air conditioning is any different in this direction. Or the heat, I guess it is today that they've got on. <laughs> got the leg, but he's wide to the right. So twice he's had the distance, but has missed it right. One each way. Five seconds still to play. And there is uh, Coach Mike Ditka watching that thing. He says, doggone it. <laughs> or something like that, anyway. <laughs> and so the uh, Bears got that ball back and failed to come up with any points. So five seconds remain, and the Lions have one last gasp here before the half comes to a conclusion. 
Bears on top, six to three. Now Mike Ditka wants this football game. They say it's a meaningless football game, but to have a little momentum going into the playoffs never hurt a football team. Well, you're looking right in the eye and say, hey, we're going to win every game. I don't care what it is. Preseason, meaningless, whatever. Hipple's going to chuck it. Short sideline incomplete. He had Reese McCall and Leonard Thompson down there together, and two Bears collided with each other. Otis Wilson and Wilbur Marshall, and Marshall a little slow to get up as the half has come to a close at the Silver Dome with the score. The Chicago Bears going for 15 and 1, leading 6 to 3. There's Lee Detroit here, 6 to 3, and we'll be back for the start of the second half at Pontiac, in Pontiac, Michigan. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris as we see Bears coach Mike Ditka cannot be too happy at the first half performance by his team as they tune up for their rush to the Super Bowl that they fully expect to get. They're even got their own theme song there, the Super Bowl shuffle back in Chicago, tuned up for it. And he was not a happy man when the Bears missed the field goal try, as long as it was by Butler. He knew he had the leg. I think that's what, what was really upsetting to Ditka. He said, hey, that ball was far enough, but he missed it to the right. Well, he's a competitor. He always has been. And he's won 18 of his last 20 games, which is not bad in the NFL. Murray will kick it off and you can see second half has been Bears territory all season long 214 to 57 Dennis Gentry this was because he's way over on the left side takes off all the way across the field puts a great move on Pete Landy sets up the block and then takes off down the sidelines looked like they had him trapped but then there was no chance for Eddie Murray to get him and Dennis Gentry goes all the way what a shocker as the Detroit Lion fans are stunned but there are a lot of Chicago Bear fans here because there was a lot of noise the Bears shocked the Lions to open the second half Willie Gulp took one for 99 yards back on September 29th to turn the game around against the Washington Redskins. Gentry goes 94 here at the Silverdome. Butler with a point after. And suddenly the 6-3 ball game as we look at Dennis Gentry is opened up. Well, there's a young man that has had to kind of live in the shadow of Walter Payton during his short career because it's tough to play when Walter Payton's there. They got him into some third down situations this year as the season progressed and he's quick, he's fast. He did have a tendency to fumble a little bit earlier in his career, but this man is going to be playing more and more, especially uh, as Walter Payton gets older and older. Let's see it again. An interesting thing happened here, Johnny. When we see him come up field near midfield, watch the kicker, Eddie, Eddie Murray. He had the last decent shot at him and an official turned up somewhat in his way. Watch it at midfield. Okay, here was the key move there as he got by Manley. And this is Reese McCall trying to close in. He can't get to him. And it was Eddie Murray who had the shot at him. There. And there is the official who was in the way. But I don't really think it had an effect. I don't think Murray was going to catch him. Gentry was in full gear that time. And, you know, he's pretty fast in that 100-yard dash. And uh, Eddie Murray, of course, is a field goal kicker, a place kicker. And now he's going to be in on the kickoff team. There's Dennis You'd Gentry. You'd think he earned a rest, wouldn't you? You'd think, hey, well, let us <laughs> the number two man and let Dennis rest a little bit. No, he wants to get right back in there. When you're a special teamer, you got to do it anyway. The four-year man from Baylor. He was the third draft choice in 1982, but as Johnny pointed out, play by Walter Payton, he hasn't had a chance to show his stuff. A.J. Jones in the end zone will not bring out Butler's kickoff. So the Lions will start first down from their own 20-yard line and now trailing 13 to 3. And don't forget that the conclusion of our telecast will be going 
to this game. Dallas and the 49ers, the Super Bowl champions, up against it. They must win today. If they do, they're in as a wild card with a record of 10 and 6. And they would go to meet the Giants at the Meadowlands. If they lose to the Cowboys, it'll be the Washington Redskins. They defeated St. Louis yesterday to keep themselves alive. And, of course, Dallas, what's at stake for them? Well, they want the home field. Everybody does in playoff time. If they win and the Rams Receiving lose to the Raiders Monday night, 32. Dallas Offside. will have the home field. Refused. First down. The penalty on the kickoff was against Detroit. Refused by the Bears. And so the play will go from the 20. And things are could get worse now for the Lions because once the Bears get ahead and that defense is on top of you, uh, you got some problems. The Bears have only allowed 27 points in the second half for the last 12 games. Only 27 points. So the Lions are going to have to come from behind. That's tough to do against the Bears. Hipple continues at quarterback. James Jones, their main man offensively this season, gets out to the 25 for a gain of five, tripped up by Singletary. If you joined us late, Joel Ferguson started the game at quarterback for the Lions, did not last through the first series. The reason he started, a knee injury to Eric Hipple that was aggravated last week in the Green Bay game, and the medical advice that a hard knock on that uh, could prolong his rehabilitation. But Ferguson, flattened by linebacker Wilbur Marshall, knocked unconscious on the field and not expected to return today, so Hipple is the man. Carl Bland. Perfectly thrown and timed pass to Carl Bland, forced out by Richardson just short of the first down. You know, it's kind of interesting if you look at uh, Hipple's stats. He's the sixth-rated quarterback in the NFC. That's not all that bad. Eric Hipple passing at 55.5% on the entire season. 15 interceptions, however. Three of those last week. Double tight ends. Yardage and a guard Mark Stevenson in for the extra blocking. Oh, yeah. Jones has the first down. James Jones. So Detroit at their 31 keeps the ball. And a Bear defender is down on the field. And it is Mike Singletary getting well, some attention. If that's serious, that could be a big blow to the Bears defense because Singletary is one of the men who makes it go. Seems to be in. Some pain. Singletary, one of the five Pro Bowl starters selected from the Chicago Bears. So while they attend to him, we'll take a timeout and return you to the Silver Dome with the Bears in front, 13 to three. Up and uh, an apparent knee injury. Best we can say now, if uh, if he can't go, boy oh boy, what a loss that would be. They were testing him for stretch uh, ligaments as they look at Ron Revere, who is in for. Mike Singletary, 59. Rivera, second-year man from California. Flags everywhere as the Bears burst into the backfield before the ball came up. So, again, it's that old question of were they drawn or did they jump. Ron Rivera, the second-year man from Defense California. Number 72. Encroachment. That's the fridge. Encroachment. Rivera, the second-year choice in 1984 in for Singletary. There's the Fridge 72. He went a little bit too soon. He wanted to get after that quarterback. There's the man who's uh, gotten a lot of notoriety. You know how many yards he gained this year? Seven yards. <laughs> Seven yards for William Perry has made him a household name in the United States. I like his uh, one of his more recent endorsements is a long underwear company and their slogan is we keep the refrigerator warm. <laughs> that one appeals to me. First down. first down he was actually tripped up by a bear's foot or he might have gone farther but the Lions have first down at their own 42 yard line getting back to Mike Singletary it's going to be some interesting things going on over on the bench other they were testing and the doctor Dr. Foster was testing for how much the ligaments were stretched if they're stretched we still don't know the severity of that uh, injury, but we'll keep you posted on that. That could be a serious blow to the Bear defense. In motion comes Bland, and then back the other way on first down, Lions. Quick sideline to the near side, Thompson. A pickup of five quick yards, and uh, the first report is a sprained knee, and the possibility that Mike Singletary might return. Well, 
uh, I would say that that is it's not real likely that he'll come back out there but he's the kind of a guy it's hard to keep off the field oh, he's a tough guy he's over there running backwards now trying uh, testing it so it wouldn't surprise me if Singletary came back in the football game he's like old Dick Butkus <laughs> the knee could be gone and he'd still play second down a long five Lions trailing 13 to 3 boy the Bears are off sides on that play Jones stuffed right at the line of scrimmage James Jones Hampton was there William Perry Wilbur Marshall lined up a yard off sides and nobody even threw a flag. It's unbelievable. No gain on the play. And third down. Out comes David Lewis, the tight end, number 87. They'll go with three wide receivers. Bland, Leonard Thompson, and Pete Manley. And, of course, with Mark Nichols going to injured reserve, they activated a defensive back, Wayne Galloway, and they have only three wide receivers in the lineup today at Detroit. There's Singletary, helmet on, saying, send me in, coach. But Fensick, with perfect timing, made the hit as Manley was trying to get a better grip on the ball. Couldn't do it. The Bears came with a, a little blitz material. As you see, 55, Otis Wilson comes to, to the outside. Notice him going to the outside. And here comes Fensick to make the hit after the ball has arrived. Just what a good defensive back should do if he's not there in time. Just jolt that ball loose as the Lions are going to punt. Mike Black, who is the nephew of former Bear quarterback Virgil Carter. Black standing at his own 32. The deep man for the Bears is Ken Taylor. Bear catch signal and a diving grab by Taylor out at the Bears 16 yard line. So Chicago will have the ball for the first time in this second half offensively and they lead 13 to 3. My wife was having her second. Under the Christmas day, our to the Cleveland Browns are live action, followed by Marks up front. Doubleheader day of activity on Christmas Day here on CBS Sports. First down, Bears from their 16-yard line. Walter Payton bashes for a couple. And Johnny, uh, quite remarkable, 74,042 fans in attendance here today. The game, as we said, sold out two weeks ago, but with the Lions out of it and some nasty weather outside, that's a, a great turnout. I'd say it's a game. tribute to Lion fans, wouldn't you? I and sure also would. the magic of the Chicago Bears. They wanted to see what a 15-1 and one team looked like. Or I should say 14-1 and one right now. They didn't look too good in the first half, actually. <laughs> Their defense, of course, continues to shine. But offensively, uh, some turnovers and three sacks given up. Jim McMahon, he's got lots of time on this one. Willie Galt takes a tough hit but holds on at the 35-yard line of the Bears. 19-yard gain as William Graham gave him a pretty good shot. An excellent pass blocking by the Bears because the Detroit Lions defensive lineman never got close to McMahon. And when you can have that kind of time to survey the field, and Graham does what a good defensive back does. He's going to catch the pass. Galt caught it, and he has to take his punishment. He put a big hit on Galt. McMahon, we talked about being sacked three times. He gave up two interceptions in the first half, but he was 10 of 15, or is now 10 of 15, 158 yards on the day. Peyton in motion. Yeah, Morehead. First down, Bears. At the 44-yard line, William Graham with a free hit. Morehead down. Made sure he made it count. Now, see William Graham, 33, at the bottom of your screen. He's got to pick Moorhead up when he gets deep. Moorhead's first coverage was by uh, Jimmy Williams, and he can't stay with him. And by the time Graham can get over there, uh, it's a big gain. So it's linebacker coverage until you get down about 10 or 15 yards, and the safety has uh, got a tough job on that kind of a situation. That is where you throw that ball at that point in between. As they're working on, that's Freddie Cato, the Bears trainer, working on Mike Singletary, and he's got his stocking back up. He says, I'm okay. Yeah, it looked like you could read his lips there, telling Cliff Griff it's fine. First down. Good job to Peyton. Peyton cuts it inside, is tripped up, and picks up about 7, maybe 8. William Graham, the man that upset him. And here's a little fact you might uh, well recall, Johnny Morris. So the last time that the Lions had a kickoff return for a touchdown against him here in the Silverdome was back in 1980. 
and it was Dave Williams. Dave Williams in overtime, I believe. Yeah, opened overtime and thus gave the Bears victory. And uh, there's a name out of the past, yeah. Dave Williams. Well, another guy who played behind Walter Payton in his time. Played some fullback and halfback, as I recall. Payton is now 37 yards on 10 carries, 87 total yards. Blocked by Matt Suey. He proves how valuable he is time and time again. He took a put a block on Angelo King. Watch 26. The up back here. Good seal block there. And here comes the block on 92. He just dumped Angelo King and Peyton just followed his blocks. There were several key blocks there. Not enough time to point them all out, but that one goes to Matt Suey, 26. John Bostick, number 42, made the tackle. He's in there for Bruce McNorton, and uh, if there were any doubts about how hard this game would be played by these two teams, they have certainly been erased. McNorton has gone with a knee injury. Joe Ferguson, the quarterback, knocked out of the game in the first series. Singletary has been hurt for the Bears. And Peyton on the swing pass. Picks up about four yards, forced out by William Gay. Gay ranging out from his defensive end position there in that particular uh, defensive situation, and Gay reading it, no doubt, getting out into the action wide. Uh, Peyton's got to be close to the 2,000 yards combined yardage. He's, three more uh, yards. He needs three more yardage. Three more yards. And we see the Jets have opened their lead over the Cleveland Browns, 24 to 10 in the third period. New England still ahead of Cincinnati, but it's 20 to 13 in the third quarter there. Second down and five, Chicago. Suey breaks tackles and has the first down. Hard running by Matt Suey. He had 425 yards on the season coming into the game. More of those, 100 yards and more, were against the Lions in their last meeting. He's got 43 today. And a good block by Jay Hilgenberg, the center who has made the Pro Bowl team. He stood everybody up there and allowed Suey to pick his way one side or the other of the of the defensive line. And the Bears are really doing what they do best, especially against Detroit, is run the ball now. They came out throwing in this game, and they're basically getting back to what they have done best all year, and that's run the ball. All right. Statistics speaks for itself, and here comes Peyton. Picking up four more, close to the 15-yard line as the Bears grind it out. Steve Bach and Ken Fantetti make the tackle. Bach's been getting a fair amount of time as the nose tackle in the three-man Detroit front. And Walter Payton has crossed that 2,000 mark for the season. 2,000 combined yards for the third consecutive season. And he's pushing towards 15,000 yards for his career. <laughs> that means he's going to need his 15,000-yard checkup here pretty soon. We just saw him look up at the screen that they have here in the Silver Dome, and he can read that information, you folks at home, could, so he knows himself where to look and what he's got. Second down and six. He's going to go again. A flag down as Peyton's got running room. And now William Graham knocks him flying bounds at the 12-yard line. We'll see what the flag is. That record uh, of three 2,000-yard years in a row is an NFL record for Walter. So add another one to the books. Offside is signaled against the Lions on the play. Defense. Number 68. Offside. That's Still Steve Buck. down. penalty of the afternoon charged against the Lions as Walter Payton adjusts his pads. He was knocked flying out of the sideline area there by William Graham. Yeah. Graham and Payton have their own kind of little That's personal right. duel. <laughs> Goes back two or three years. Walter's fourth year in the league. Walter's got his mouthpiece in, so watch out. Second down and about a yard for a first down. They got the down over on the infraction against Detroit. Payton in motion. Just picked his way through there and got the first down. Good blocking by Ports and Hilgenberg for Jim McMahon. And so the Bears are first and goal. Leading 13 to 3 on the kickoff return by Dennis Gentry. 94 yards to open the second half here at the Silverdome. 
Well, you can see inside the opponent's 20-yard line, possession 72 for the Bears. They've scored 60 times, 33 touchdowns, 27 field goals. A big improvement for the Chicago Bear offense because for the early years of Mike Ditka's career, the Bears had trouble getting into the end zone once they were in, inside the 20-yard line. So they have changed that statistic. This is the 10th play in this drive that started at the Bears' 16-yard line. And Suey gets inside the five. Now, the last time they had a drive like this, they were stopped by the Lions and had to settle for the field goal. Let's see what Detroit's defense can do down here close now. Second and goal from the four-yard line. On come some more beefy players up front. Leon Evans, Martin Moss, and Curtis Green come in. And three linebackers come out. And Teddy, August Curley, and Angelo King. Well, that would tend to make a, a coach call a play that goes off tackler out to the outside with all that beef in there. The man looking it over, and uh, he didn't see a number he expected to see, so he calls timeout. And we'll see if Jim McMahon and Mike Ditka agree on which play should be called. <laughs> well, I wonder if we'll see the fridge. We're in fridge territory here. Yeah, we are in fridge territory, but uh, Mike has made it pretty plain that uh, the fridge may do something today, but the long-range plan for William Perry is to play more and more defense and less and less offense, uh, especially uh, next year. But there's the fridge. He's always ready to go. Long johns and anything. <laughs> we'll be right back. Pro Bowl linebacker Mike Singletary has got that knee all wrapped up but a smile on his face nonetheless chatting with Wilbur Marshall. He will not return to the game. Second and goal. Bears have got the play call. Man to throw. Dumps it in the end zone and the receiver fell down. Matt Suey. The ball was there for me. was wide open but Suey just stumbled on the artificial turf. The old partial rollout, and there was some pressure. The Lions have forced him back here, and Sui was trying to turn around. The ball was back on the other side of his shoulder and just uh, stumbled and got caught on the on the turf. So the Bears now have a third and goal. And they, they had the right play call. That's apparent. And that was an automatic touchdown if it doesn't fall down. It's a little lob pass. Third and goal. Two linebackers now back in for the Lions. Chased all the way back to the 20-yard line by Keith Ferguson. Had to throw the ball a little sooner than he wanted to and was over the top. The Lions brought a lot of people that time. You see Jimmy Williams on the chase, Ferguson is on the chase, and uh, forced him to throw the ball before he wanted to. Took a little hit, but notice Ferguson put his hands back. Hey, I didn't hurt him. The ball was gone. I didn't try and hurt him. At any rate, the Bears failed to get the touchdown and will settle for the attempt at a field goal. Kevin Butler from 21 yards out. Butler's connected twice today, but he has also missed two long ones from 51 and 50. 21 yarders have been automatic with this youngster. And he's got it. So the Chicago Bears, again, stopped from the major score by a gutty Lions defense, but they get the field goal to move on top 16 to 3. Johnny Morris as Kevin Butler tees it up. 4.23 to go, third period. Bears on top, 16 to 3. 80 yards in 13 plays as we see Alvin Hall, dangerous return man for the Lions, waiting to kick off. And the Bears ground out 7 11 off the clock. It's been a forte all season long. Five yards deep, Hall will bring it out. Calvin Thomas, number 33. Eric Hippel brings out the Lions. The Bears so far have given up 71 net passing yards. It was the one category that they currently lead in in the entire league that they were a little concerned about. Philadelphia, 86 yards behind them in that category. Philadelphia leading Minnesota handily at our last report. And uh, so whether the Bears will make it hold up or not, we won't know until that game in Minnesota is over. But right now, things look good for the Bears in the passing yardage against category. On first down, Hipple. The man open. 
And that is Leonard Thompson for a first down, so they gave up a little bunch there. 15 to be exact. Hipple in the first half was 4 of 13, 72 yards. And there's Darrell Rogers. His team may end up 7 and 9, but overall I think they've done a pretty good job. Uh, the Lions were picked for last or next to last in the division, and, and they beat uh, some pretty good teams. They beat Miami here, and they beat Dallas here, and they beat San Diego here. San Francisco. San Francisco here. And uh, his Lions have played hard-nosed football all year. First and 10 from the 45-yard line. The Lions. Play action. Hippo running out of time. Makes a good move. He's got a man on him. Got the ball off. Intended for James Jones. Incomplete. And Hippo slow to get up. And Richard Dent, or is it Wilson? Wilson, 55. He says, I had a hold of him. And play should have been whistled dead in the grass of. And uh, Hippo hurt his knee a little bit. And uh, Otis Wilson thinks he should have had a sack here. As we'll see Hippo come out of the pocket. It's Richard Dent, 95, is putting the uh, original pressure from the backside. And the refrigerator, 72, helped force him out. Now, here comes the uh, where the Bears are arguing. Here's Otis Wilson, 55. He gets the clamp on him and uh, almost down. Now, that I've seen officials call that in the grass before. It's officials' judgment. At any rate, Hipple's still in the football game. Second and 10. Quick pass to Lewis, the tight end. A gain of five, hit immediately by Gary Fensick. David Lewis with 25 catches coming into the game, his first of the afternoon. It'll leave a third down and a long five for the Lions right at midfield. And when you uh, talk about gutty quarterbacks playing hurt much of the season, Eric Kippel has to be in the top two or three. He's now eight of 19 for 100 yards on the day. Blitz. Up the middle, it's complete to blame for a first down. So Hippel delivers again. Mike Richardson on the tackle. Yes, Bland loves, does like to come over the middle. He said it, and he meant it. And there's uh, Hippo, who held his ground there. The Bears were bearing down on him, about seven rushers, and he still spotted the receiver, Bland, coming right over the middle. You can see the blitz. Uh, Dewerson was one of them. 22 was stopped up. And there is Bland making the catch. And anybody, if you happen to be a jogger, a basketball player, whatever, you know when you've got a sore knee, it's tough to perform. And look what Hippo is trying to do on that bad knee. Yeah. He's had injuries to his ribs, his back, his sternum, and his knee this season. Almost a great catch. Intended for Alvin Moore. And it was Otis Wilson who made it impossible for him to hold on. Because, again, well-timed hit on Moore. Who had the ball in his hands, then took the contact. And as he was upset from underneath by Wilson, he just couldn't maintain possession. Second down. Ron Rivera, we should mention, continues at the middle linebacking spot in the Bears 4-3, replacing Mike Singletary. The number two choice a year ago doesn't get much playing time behind Singletary, as you might expect. Oh, whoa! Pitbull just got that off as Dave Dewerson came on the safety blitz. Remarkable that Hipple got the ball away at all. I think there uh, the Lions feel he was offside or that somebody was. Well, there's an automatic conversion by the receivers, too. I don't know whether... Here comes 22. He timed the snap right and just got through slick and clean. Rodgers was, was very upset, still discussing it on the sideline. I'm not sure what uh, he was annoyed about, except for the possibility that he thought it was an offside. So it's third down. Bland. Bland is close to the first down as Fensick puts a stop on him. Bland has not dropped anything thrown near him in this game today, and he had seven catches last week against Green Bay in his first role as a starter. And you're going to see Mandley's there, too, and it's amazing when you, re when you complete a pass like this, you'll see two Lion receivers both coming across the middle almost in tandem, yet uh, they still completed the pass. So it's very close on the first down, and uh, Bland is really... Uh, really come on the last couple of games. He was certainly uh, very aware that today he had a chance to prove to Darrell Rodgers that he should be 
on this roster of wide receivers next year. He was very determined and grateful for the opportunity to have another game left, having gotten in for the first time last week. And you notice he has gloves on. Some of these receivers wear gloves. It's 70 degrees in here, but they get used to that. And here comes a key play for the Lions. Fourth and a very little. Extra blockers in. James Jones. He's got it. Jones they went to their main man and he delivers again last week 104 yards against the Packers 812 on the season coming into the game terrific attitude this guy has despite all of the the, the difficult times that the Lions have had James Jones Mr. Steady and he's also playing with sprained ligaments in his thumb so you get this point of the season you got to play hurt and uh, it, they're going to measure it, but it looks to me. I've already like given it to them, it, but yeah. <laughs> that doesn't count for much. They're going to have a look at it. Fred Silva, the referee, will preside. You know, uh, that was really jammed up in the middle. Jones is not a leaper. Any leaper could have gone over and gotten a couple of yards because everybody jammed in. There's the first down. It's a big drive for the Lions if they're to get back in this football game. Darrell Rogers, who was coach of the year in the Big Ten back in 1977 at Michigan State. Vikings have come back against Philadelphia. It's now 24-21 for the Eagles over the Vikings. What if the Eagles blow another one after a big lead? They're in the third period. Tommy Kramer with two consecutive touchdown passes. First down, Lions. Jones. To the one-yard line. Fensick saved the touchdown. If you worry about Jones' speed, take a look at this. They caught the Bears in their regular four-man rush that time. Henry Wacker, 70, was pushed out by the center, Mott, and then Jones takes off, and he has pretty good speed for a big man. Dave Durson on the chase, and it's 45 Fensick who knocks him out of bounds. And I'll tell you one thing, Jones just, just chopped up his elbow when he hit the ground. It's just full of blood. That shows you how hard this turf can be. So 29 yards for James Jones his longest run from scrimmage of the season. And the Lions on the doorstep. Hip with a little roll, can't find a man. Now he has touchdown. Flag on the play. Lewis with the score. Boy, did Richard Dent level Hipple after he threw that ball. And Hipple's back up, though. It's a touchdown for the Lions. Penalty against the Bears. Interesting, on first down, they go right to the air, and Hippo waited, 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 and got the pass off, took his punishment, and there it was, wide open. And now you want to see the hit that he took from Richard Dent? After the point, we'll take a look at it. Eddie Murray has the point after. A quarterback has a crucial decision at this. He has to, when he feels that, that pressure coming, he has to either try and dodge him or just take his punishment and get the pass off. And Hippo made the right decision, and the hit was high, which helped him on his knee situation. The hit was high. So the Lions, scrappy in their Lions' den, where they have lost only once at home, have reduced the margin to six. 70 yards in 10 plays, 255 the length of their drive. And Daryl Rogers got to be pleased with the pluck that his team is displaying here final season game. The Jets now have widened their lead over Cleveland, 27 to 10 in the third period. New England continues to lead Cincinnati. The Bengals hang tough down by four. Miami out in front of Buffalo. Now, if all three of those teams win, the Dolphins would win the AFC East title. The Patriots and the Jets would both be in as wild cards and would meet next week at the Jets' home park, the Meadowlands. Well, you've got all that stuff Minnesota done well, haven't you? <laughs> well, I got help from all of our troops here, our outstanding production support personnel. Murray into the end zone golf. Golf, slow to get up. 
And who said the Lions didn't have anything to play for? They are hitting. They've been hitting all day. They may not win this football game, but Darrell Rodgers is getting his answer as far as uh, the spirit on this football team. And the Bears definitely have felt that they have found a weakness on the kickoff return. That's about four times that a receiver has caught the ball way on one side of the field and gone across the field because apparently the, the Lions are converging towards that one side of the field. It worked for them once. They got a kickoff return from Dennis Jeffrey. Peyton is still in the game. Bears have used all of their starters with the exception of those that are hurt. Peyton. Gets about six or seven. Just a quick review on that very fact about the Bears. McMichael, the defensive tackle, came into the game with a bad knee. He played just the first series. Henry Wachter's been in there since. Singletary went out with a knee injury suffered in this game and has been replaced by Ron Rivera. But Mike Ditka has stayed with his starters, and uh, he's told us as firmly as only Iron Mike Ditka can tell you yesterday, hey, we play every game to win. There's no suggestion. I'd like to get all my players in the game, but I won't do that if we're in any danger of losing the football game. Well, the Lions are playing to win, too. Stop short of the first down. Leon Evans in the defensive lineup for the Lions, number 66, and now he comes out and William Gay comes back in. It's going to be third and about a yard, maybe less. actually called for it too and McMahon has gone to the sidelines to talk with Mike Ditka. He got it. It appeared to be short where he was stopped but the measurement gives it to the Bears. Dan Bunn's in the game defensively for the Lions. Number 97 familiar name to 49er fans picked up as a free agent after being among the late cuts by the Super Bowl champs in the preseason. 30-year-old veteran from Cal State Long Beach. And he was uh, picked up by the Lions when Kurt Allerman went on injured reserve. Allerman had been signed after another injury. <laughs> the Lions have had their share. Peyton with blockers. Can't close. Will he go? Complete. First down at the 22-yard line. 50-yard play, Payton to Willie Gulp. Unbelievable play by Walter Payton. He was out of room. He was running towards the sidelines and just gave it all the muscle he could, and he still got a spiral. It was a little bit short, and Willie Gulp came back to make the grab. A key first down for the Chicago Bears, and they surprised the Lions. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Bears, 16. The Lions, 10. We pause now for a word from your local station by light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronic store. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at the Silverdome where a 50-yard bomb from Walter Payton to Willie Gall has the Bears in scoring position again at the 24 of Detroit. three-yard line. Bobby Watkins forced him out. Let's see that again. He's going to be unhappy to get a touchdown. He usually throws touchdown passes. Let's okay, see that he makes it look like, play again. like a run pretty well here. Doesn't put the ball back until the last second. Now he's out of room and just on muscle alone, he got the ball down. There was a little short, but Galt alertly spotted the ball first. And Walter Payton has now completed 11 of 29 passes for almost 300 yards. He averages almost 30 yards Every, when he throws, the, when he completes a pass, and he has seven touchdown passes during his career, unbelievable. I was going to say he's, he's used to throwing touchdown passes. He's probably unhappy. <laughs> First and goal inside the ten. Peyton hit right at the line of scrimmage. A flag down by Jimmy Williams, but a stand-up, straight-up tackle got Peyton at the line. Might even be a loss of a little, and a penalty against the Bears to boot. 
Well, that was a good play by Williams. Boy, he played off the block and made the tackle. And it's not going to make that much difference because of the holding penalty situation. Offense number 78, holding. 10 yards, first down. Keith Van Horn charged with holding. That'll back it out to the 18-yard line of Detroit. We are just underway in the fourth quarter. A six-point margin for the First Chicago Bears. From the 18. And they're now at the 18-yard line as Curtis Green comes on. And Ken Fantetti. Out come Bach. And the linebacker, Dan Bunt. from behind by Fantetti but picked up five yards inside the 15. Through three quarters of play the Bears with 322 yards of total offense to 180 for the Lions. 25 minutes and 30 seconds of clock time against 19 and a half minutes for Detroit. Peyton now has 76 yards rushing on the day Johnny on 16 carries. get to the eight-yard line for a first down. Check. Check. Uh, that's incorrect. But McMahon going for the end zone and missed everything. Intended for golf. Bears are second and goal, I should correct them, the 15 on the holding penalty backing them up. There's Wayne Fonts giving his boys some encouragement. And Daryl Rogers. had the coverage on Willie Galt. Hard to tell for sure whether McMahon just threw it away there or not. The last play. Dennis Gentry has come on for Chicago along with Kenny Marjoram. And the Lions are substituting accordingly. Well, they got four new men in on the field. A bunch of defensive backs. Frizzell and Galloway. And the shotgun on third and goal. Did they give him the touchdown there? It looks like... Uh, Evidently yes. not. Yes or no? Yeah, they gave it to him. See whether his knee was down. It looked to me like he got the ball in. Okay, McMahon's best ability is to feel that pass rush and spot the opening up the middle. And he went uh, heck back for election on this one. He did not slide in. He decided he wanted the touchdown and took the dive. Looked like he hit right on the end zone. Butler for the point after. And he's good. And some rough stuff down there, even on the conversion play. These guys are taking this game very seriously indeed. And the Bears widen their lead with 13.44 to play regulation time, 23 to 10. You see uh, McMahon on the bench there with his guard Tom Thayer and a little scrape on the back of his passing hand that came as he landed on the goal line and evidently was in the end zone before his knee hit the touchdown ruled good Butler will kick it off and that brings us back to the conversation with McMahon yesterday which will come to after this play Butler right at the goal line now with the ball Looking Alvin Hall battled his way near the 20 yard line before Sean Gale stopped him and the Bears going 83 yards, using up 244 on six plays for the McMahon 14-yard touchdown run. Didn't he tell us yesterday yeah, he that he would he would not be diving or trying to run over anybody until the playoffs? That's right, but I think he changed his <laughs> mind. He said, yes, I'm trying to, I want to get into the playoffs, preserve myself and get into the playoffs. But then he said, all signals are off. I'm not going to be diving or running out of, uh, uh, sliding or running out of bounds. But... He smelled the goal line here in Detroit. And an opportunity to widen the lead, and he went for it. Mike Hartenstein in defensively for the Bears. Play action for Hipple. Deep sideline. Thompson dropped the ball. You will not see that very often. Leonard Thompson 
with Richardson covering, just flat out dropped it. Hipple had plenty of time on the partial roll at that time and uh, threw it right on the dime. It's just simply a drop pass, and what do you say? He put it right there, and Thompson, who normally catches the ball well, just dropped it. Looked like it might have hit him on the, uh, the shoulder pad and bounced away. There's so many more, it seems to me, that there's so many more drop passes in the last 10 years than there used to be. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But... Well, Johnny, I mean, they don't have as many good receivers as they did when they were playing. Oh, they've got some great receivers that just drop more passes. <laughs> Second and 10. Jones nearly one-handed it. It's knocked loose by Dent. And taken in by Rivera now. That appeared to me to be an incomplete pass. Is there a touchdown signal? Yes. Well, they had to rule out a completed pass and a drop. And, and Rivera will get the score. What do you think, Johnny? He got the score and the slam. Ron Rivera with his first National Football League. The uh, only other possibility of it would be that it wasn't forward, and it certainly appeared to me to be forward. Let's see it. Okay. Did he take any steps after he caught the ball? One. Did he catch the ball? Oh, I don't. He uh, didn't have possession of the football. Not in my judgment. It didn't look like it to me. That's a tough call, though, because he did play possession, took a couple of steps, uh, kind of stutter steps while he was trying to reach back with his other hand on the ball. Daryl Rogers is, looks Stunned. like he's out of emotion. <laughs> yeah. Butler will kick the point after. We'll take another look at it a little slower and see. Yeah, I, uh, I, don't, uh, I, I don't agree with that call. Good effort by Rivera of the Bears. Give him credit. Came up with a loose ball. For the Bear touchdown, Butler with a point after, and suddenly it's 30 to 10 with 13-16 still to play in regulation time. But it just did not appear to me he had to bring it in with one hand, and I don't think he had full possession of the ball. Okay, now we get another uh, another look at it as uh, Richard Dent is out on the cover. He's got it there. It's would you call that possession? I, I would say it's possession. I think he had possession. Well, that's a, it's a judgment call by uh, the human beings wearing the zebra stripes. And I saw it one way and you saw it another, which means that the officials clearly can have a difference of opinion. And whoever made that call saw it as a catch and a fumble. Uh, Darrell Rogers didn't see it that way. He sure didn't. He's... In fact, while we were showing you the replay, he was trying to get the official who made the call to come over and discuss it with him. And I can only assume that Darrell's argument is, is the one that I'm making, which is that the ball was not caught. Should have been an incomplete pass. And he, he obviously didn't get to see it in slow-mo like we did, too, and it was uh, a much closer call when you look at it at slow motion. There's Ron Rivera. At any rate, the linebacker from the University of California, the Bears' second-round pick in 84, has scored a touchdown. And depending on the severeness of the uh, injury to Mike Singletary, could become more of a factor in the Bear defense. I do think Singletary could have played, but they don't want to take any chances uh, after hurting his knee. Alvin Hall, away from Phillips. Dancing. Oh. Alvin Hall, what a great effort. Tom Andrews finally got him, but he's over the 40-yard line, a 43-yard return. The all-time kickoff return leader in Lions history. I'll say one thing, this is an entertaining football game. It might not mean anything in the standings, but it means something to those guys as he go, fakes the middle. As he goes up the middle like a good returner should, then dips to the outside, outside of Phillips, who got caught inside, and then Hall stopped dead cold. Ken Taylor missed him, and then uh, watch Alvin Hall get the most out of it. Finally, Tom Andrews, number 60, makes the tackle. 5'10", 185-pounder. In his fifth year, 27 years of age. Good job. Hippel. That's blocked by Henry Wachter at the line of scrimmage. Wachter playing for the injured Steve McMichael today. There he is. They call him Hayseed. But he got, he's tall, he's big, and Mike Hartenstein is also in along with him. So a couple of players who haven't played that much are, are in this football game. I wouldn't call him Hayseed. I would neither. I'm saying the other guys call him Macy. I always say hi, Henry. <laughs> Second and 10. Hipple, 12 of 27. 124 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Bad knee and all. James Jones on the drop left.
play is hit by Hampton behind the line of scrimmage. Dan Hampton headed for the Pro Bowl and playing with a bad knee all season long. And don't forget, at the end of this game, we've got 12.39 to go. We'll be going to this key doubleheader game. Dallas at San Francisco. The Super Bowl champs need to win today to make the playoffs as a wild card. Yeah. And don't forget, at the end of this game, we've got 12.39 to go. We'll be going to this key doubleheader game. Dallas at San Francisco. The Super Bowl champs need to win today to make the playoffs as a wild card. Yeah, and next weekend, the wild card game will feature the Giants at home at the Meadowlands in New Jersey against either the 49ers if they win or if the 49ers lose, it'll be the Redskins. Victors yesterday over St. Louis. Loss of a half yard. He can scoot. First down for Pete Manley and the Lions at the Bears 23 yard line. Frazier pushed him out. The Lions came back with the repeat. They got Wilbur Marshall in a man for man situation. Here's 58 coming with, with Manley in motion and he slips coming out of there. Manley gets by him and comes across the middle. He's all by himself. Nobody to cover and uh, turns on the speed. Gets by Fensick and it was only Leslie Frazier 21 left that was going to make the tackle and he knocked him out of bounds but the Lions came back for a repeat play and uh, got to Wilbur Marshall on that it's a tough job for a linebacker I don't care who you are to cover a wide receiver going in motion and then pick him up down the field 37 yards on the play and Manley's been the recipient of two big ones and now Hippo changing something up complete good catch in traffic by the tight end Lewis, number 87, Fensick, right there. But Lewis came up with the ball and a gain of close to nine. There's a factor becoming involved here, Tim, and that is the the Bears' defense on pass defense. They're starting to give up some yardage now, and uh, not a, not a, that it's the most major thing in the world, but they want to be number one in all categories. 159 yards passing for the Lions in this game to this point. Bears with an 86-yard lead over the Philadelphia Eagles coming into the action today. Second down and a long two. The ball, and it is incomplete. Flag down in the play. Mike Richardson will be called for interfering with Leonard Thompson. So the Lions continue to play at their hardest. I haven't seen the replay yet, but I have to agree with the call. Pass it looked First like down. Richardson made contact a little before the ball got there. Okay, you're going to get a chance in your nice warm living room as the ball is going to come at us. And the key is that Richardson hit him before the ball got there. He's already on contact, so it was an accurate call. Reese McCall and Mark Stevenson come in to add some blocking bulk as they have first and goal at the five. Cliff Frick and William Perry have just come on the field for the Bears. And it's going to be Dewis and Hipple gets away, and it is incomplete. With a flag down, Hipple did a good job of eluding the blitzing safety Dave Dewerson. A flag down field. It's against Chicago. And it's offside. It might have been the uh, blitzing safety, Dewerson. Left side of the line, defense. Well, offside, the... half the distance, still first down. The left side of the yeah. line. The Bears are interesting, though. They'll come at you on the three-yard line and all-out blitz and take all kinds of chances. But more than not, it will work for them. Whatever happened to the old looky pass? You know that old looky yep. pass? Yeah. You know the old tight end looking pass? I saw one of those in a highlight from another game last week. Uh, elsewhere around the league but you're rare you're right it's rare or you're also rare sometimes you're right the penalty <laughs> was the eight <laughs> against the Bears today <laughs> 58 yards if they get to that and it's incomplete the tight end Lewis the intended receiver but again three Bears on the charge and Hipple is going to be dreaming about white jerseys and dark hats tonight. Well, the key for the Lions is that if you're going to pass down there, you know what the Bears are going to do. You don't take the time to fake the draw here. And like you fake the draw by the time you set up, the Chicago Bears are all over you. Wilbur Marshall and Richard Dent. If you're going to throw against the Bears down there, man, 
throw, throw the ball in a hurry. You don't fool around with the fake and the handoff. Well, they got that penalty on the preceding play, so they still have second down and goal, and they're at the three-yard line. Straight out of him, a little power here with the lead back, and in goes James Jones. You give him a couple of steps, and he's got enough power that he boomed his way through. And the Lions are back in this football game because they'll be 13 points down unless they miss the extra point. Eddie Murray with a point after. 59 yards and six plays for the Lions. And with 11.01, still lots of time left to play. The Lions in their den, battle back. Excite me for Christmas. Who but Zales could bring such thrills to diamond fashion rings in both design and price. More shimmer in quarter count. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, we had a 6-3 football game at halftime. Look at it now. 30 to 17. And the Lions with James Jones taking it in. And close the margin to 30 to 17. Murray's kickoff taken by Willie Gump. Good tackle from behind as there was briefly some room in the middle. He got to the 29 where Reese McCall made the stop. 27-yard return. And Steve Fuller has come in at quarterback for the Bears. So that will probably be all for Jim McMahon today. There's a whole bunch of, inter of uh, replacements. New Year's Eve on CBS Sports. The Peach Bowl will have the Cadets of Army against... The Fighting Illini from Illinois live at 2.30 Eastern Time. The likes of Jack Trudeau. And for the Illini. Fuller on first down. Gets away from William Gay. And now it's hit by Gay with a good second effort. A sack and a loss of four. Boy, did they crunch Steve Fuller on that. William Gay for the seven and a half sacks. William Gay, who's had a pretty good year, his sack total isn't what it used to be, but that's partly because they go to that 3-4 defense quite a bit. As Fuller was looking to this side and then starts to scramble, and you can see William Gay really earned that sack. He was all over the place, number 79, and finally gets in it from behind and puts the hit on, uh, on Fuller with uh, help from Ferguson. But he's recovered six fumbles. He's forced a couple of fumbles. He's intercepted a pass. He's had a decent year, even though he hadn't had many sacks. Second and 14. I'll pick up the Bears substitutes for you in a moment. Fuller trying to find an open man and can't, so he just takes the safe route down. Picked up about uh, maybe two yards, and it'll leave third down and about 12. Now let's take a quick look at the uh, action in the AFC. The Jets have widened their lead over Cleveland 30 to 10, so things look good for the Jets. They're in the fourth period. New England leading Cincinnati. Apparently on route to victory there, and Miami, we suspect, yes, indeed, they've widened their lead over Buffalo 27 to zip. Now, if they all three win, the Dolphins will win the AFC East title. The Patriots and Jets will also be in the playoffs, will face each other as the wild cards with the Jets having the home game next weekend. Let's get some of these replacements. Sanders is in at one of the halfbacks. Keith Ortigo is a wide receiver. Humphreys, Andrew, and Fedrick on the offensive line. Third down. And Buns makes the re now watch the block by 33 William Graham on Tom Andrews 60 right here crunching block by a defensive back on a lineman and uh, Bunce takes it down and the Lions are threatening once again and the Bear defenders most of the first stringers are all in there except for uh, Singletary of course Wachter for McMichael and Dan Hampton still playing he's supposed to always be banged up but he's always in there 
Jimmy Williams was the linebacker who tipped it to Bunge. First down, Hipple, sideline Thompson. Away from Wilson, but caught by Frazier. Still a gain of about six. The Lions trying to keep that mystique of winning at home. Trying to battle back here with 8.49 to play in the regulation time. If the Lions gain 19 more yards passing, the Bears will lose the pass defense title. For whatever that means. <laughs> well, it's important to them, Buddy Ryan. Yep. All of his players have made a big point about wanting to be number one in all three categories. Total rush and pass. Second down, a long four. Hippo gets time. The receiver fell down in a collision. Bland and Frazier got tied up with each other. And Bland never got to the corner. The crowd, unhappy, thought an interference call should have been forthcoming, but uh, that was not the case there. There's ruled incidental contact as Hippo is 15 of 32, 175 yards. One touchdown, one interception. So he's performed admirably under the circumstances of his knee. Now, I have an idea. It's third and five. Let's watch what the Bears do. And left the game 12 of 20 on the day. 183 yards, two interceptions. Here they come. Intercepted by Wilbur Marshall. Marshall rattles the ball, and the Lions may have come up with it. What a way to get a first down. Chris Dietrich recovered the ball as Wilbur Marshall, who made a superior interception, his timing and anticipation was perfect. But then he decided to get a little fancy. And the refrigerator 72 was putting the pressure on Hipple. There is Marshall with the interception as the Bears have the ball. Let's see what the call is here. He tried to lateral. Fensick uh, bobbled it. And then there is, it looked like the Lions recovered. I think they may be ruling that Jones's progress had been stopped and the whistle had been blown before he lateral it. At any rate, Chicago Bears have the football. Boy, oh boy, I don't I understand that one either. I don't know. Let's, let's hope we get a clarification. Daryl Rogers can't believe it. Welcome to the NFL. Well, uh, what's been happening to them today is just really incredible. They've had two already disputed calls, at least disputed by me and Daryl Rogers. <laughs> I'm just taking the objective view here. I just think that uh, they've had a couple of tough ones already, and I don't understand that one. Well, let's see if Fred Silva can clarify matters. Well, I don't want to curse since there's been no infraction. We won't hear from him unless he elects to explain to the crowd, which is still booing at the Silverdome. Four turnovers by the Bears, five by the Lions. It's been a fun game. And that is Sanders, uh, Gentry, pardon me, Dennis Gentry, number 29, stopped by William Gay. And the Bears pick up about close to five. We'll call it a five-yard gain for Gentry. Okay, we'll take a look since the officials have it now. They may have ruled, somebody may have blown the whistle right here. As though he were that, stopped. That his mean. forward yeah. progress was stopped. See, right there, they might have done that, but they probably shouldn't have. <laughs> I would say not. He's trying to advance the ball by passing it off to right. Vincic. Tackle left, trying to get to the first down marker. He'll be close. I would think that the fans, everybody watching this football game, does deserve an explanation from the officials why we did not get a clarification. I don't know. We'll try and find out for you. Darrell Rogers still hot. Well, he's had a lot of bad things happen to a team that has put on a very gritty display here in a meaningless game of the standings. What he said was, hey, I know whether we win or lose isn't going to affect anything on the season, but he said the way we won seven games and beat some tough teams doing it was because we had a great effort. I expect that today. I want it, and the players have been told that that's what I'm looking for. Well, he's been getting it today. The Bears have called timeout. Bears offense, as we uh, commented, have a fair number of substitutions in there as they hold the lead, 30 to 17. 6.47 to play regulation time. And the Bears, 30, Lions, 17. See Heisman winner Bo Jackson in the Cotton Bowl on CBS Sports. Hello.
with winter setting in, some people are worried about drinking a wine cooler when they are a whole lot cooler than they'd like to be already. So Ed got himself a cooler warmer and has developed a warmer cooler. This is simply Bartles and James heated up along with a cinnamon stick. So if you live in Minnesota or Antarctica or someplace like that, stock up on Bartles and James. It is not only the best cooler cool, but also the perfect cooler for those who prefer a cooler warmer. Thank you for your support. I bought the Volkswagen Golf for its German engineered handling and performance. That's funny. <laughs> I bought the Golf for its durability. I don't believe this. We bought the Golf for its space. Are they crazy? We bought the Golf for The football game continues right to the bitter end. Behind the gentleman in the blue sweater is the quarterback, Steve Fuller, who uh, just had to leave the game because of an injury. So Mike Tomczak has had very little action this season. The rookie from Ohio State is now the Bear quarterback. And he's going to throw on first down. It's incomplete. Intended for Marjoram behind him. And it is second down, Bears, and we see New England has defeated Cincinnati 34 to 23. So they've done their job awaiting now the outcome of the Miami Buffalo game and the Jet Cleveland game. The loser out of all this is Denver, right? If uh, these three teams that we've been talking about win, yes, that's correct. The Broncos would be out. They need help today. And Miami apparently en route to their victory. And the Jets are leading the Browns the last we looked, so. Yes, that would eliminate Denver if all three of those AFC East teams win. Second and ten, drop play Gentry. Gentry up the middle is wrapped up by Gay, and then Demetrius Johnson gets in to finish him off, a gain of about four. And the report on Fuller is a slight concussion, so he had his bell rung today. Joe Ferguson left the game on the first series with a blow to the head. And it's been a tough game, and it's taken its toll. Singletary left. McNaughton for the Lions left the game with an injury. Two quarterbacks, Ferguson and Fuller. McMahon scraped his hand, diving for the goal line. Third down. About seven to go. Well, it's a little long six, we'll say. Comes out. Incomplete. Try to get the tight end, Reitman, and sailed it a little bit. And Chicago will have to punt. Now, I think this might be the first punt by Buford. It is indeed. First punt with 5.54 remaining in regulation time. Maury Buford comes on for the first time for the Chicago Bears. Pete Manley is the deep man for the Lions, and he retreats to the 15-yard line. There is Buford. Brings in a 42.2 average on 67 punts. I don't know. Has the team ever gone a whole game without punting? I wonder. I have to look up the book for it. That would be something. Final in from Miami, the Dolphins 28 to nothing over the Bills. And that gives the Dolphins the division title in the AFC East. Buford's punt taken by Manley at the 22. Flag down. Manley tiptoes his way. And Manley will score. Will it count? I think not. Flags down back downfield, I believe, will be against Detroit. But Manley's in the end zone. A 78-yard return by Pete Manley. And apparently it'll be wiped out on a clip. Right back where he caught the ball, I believe the initial blocker, and I think it was John Bostick. It was called fairly early in the return. Yeah, I think it, it might was, have been uh, harassing one of the uh, outside guys coming down the field, a block from the back side. We'll find out. Now, there's Pete Manley, a little out of breath. Great job by him. He's become an excellent kick returner. Remember, the Lions traded Robbie Martin away to Indianapolis for Alvin Moore and gave the job to Manley, and he's responded. On the run back, Detroit 34. Holding. Decline. Number 42. Illegal block above the waist in the back. From this spot, 10 yards and first down. Well, that was Bostic. That play was downfield near where Manley made the catch. Jones was the upfield penalty that you alluded to, Johnny, probably uh, taking on one of the Bears coming downfield. Okay, Bostic is 42 there. He'd be on the left side of your screen chasing right there, and he's called there for a block from, from the backside. It looked like a definite block from the backside. 
here comes, well, we won't see the rest of it because the Lions have first down and a long ways to go. 5.32 to play, 30 to 17. The touchdown wiped out a day of bad breaks for the Lions. Hipple for Leonard Thompson and a first down of the 35 yard line. Richardson made the tackle. And this pass uh, pretty much means that the Chicago Bears won't win the league title as far as pass defense is concerned because they only needed 19 going into this play. And you can see Thompson just cradled that ball. See how he leaped up and then took it right in the stomach. I don't care what anybody tells you. That's the way to catch that ball to make sure you got it. A 22-yard pickup, and if our stats are all correct, then Washington will finish ahead of the Bears in the pass defense category for the season. First down. Hipple. He's got Thompson. First down at the Bears' 42-yard line. Boy, I just can't say enough about this entire Detroit team, and particularly Eric Kipple playing with a bad knee and just giving it all he's got. Okay, pretty good pass protection. And uh, Thompson just uh, headed for the sidelines and took it to perfect pass by Hipple as they're down to the 42 and a half yard line. The Bears have made a couple of changes on, on the defensive squad. Tyrone Keyes is now in there, number 98. Uh, Rivera is still in there. No changes in the defensive backfield. And the fridge has played a lot. Hipple has now got 220 yards passing today against the Bears, 17 of 35. And the fridge may be under 300 pounds, too, when this game is over. <laughs> First down. Draw play for James Jones, but the Bears are there. Loss on the play of a yard. Rivera and Hampton, and at the bottom of it, Tyrone Keyes and Wilbur Marshall. And with time winding down here, 4.30 to play, don't forget we'll be going to Candlestick Park. The 49ers must win against the Dallas Cowboys to make the playoffs and attempt to defend their Super Bowl crown. Let's see if they uh, run manly in motion. Try to get a mismatch. No, it doesn't look like they're going to. Second and 11. Hitler just got it away. He's got manly. To the bear, 19-yard line. Nice move by Manley, who has really become a factor here in the second half. This time he got a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Les Frazier doesn't get beat too often, and you're going to see Frazier goes for the inside move, and he went back on the corner, and uh, Hipple stood his ground and hit him right on the dime. 26 yards, 96 on three catches for Manley. Remember, the Lions have only got three wide receivers in the lineup today, and throwing a ball like this in this half, they're going to be some tired guys when it's over. Thompson, Bland, and Manley. Thompson in there now. James Jones nearly vaulted over the pileup and might have made it to the end zone had he been able to do so, but he was tripped up by Hampton in flight. Pickup of four yards, almost four yards for James Jones, and he's got 74 yards on the day. The Lions have all their timeouts left, so if they did score a touchdown, we'd have an interesting finish. Miami's scoring uh, against Buffalo is now final. So the Dolphins are the champs. The Jets have defeated Cleveland 37 to 10. The Browns already in and the Jets are there now. And that is incomplete out of bounds intended for Alvin Moore on the coverage of the linebacker Wilbur Marshall number 58. So just a quick review on that AFC situation. Jets, Miami, New England, all winners today, all in the playoffs. Dolphins, AFC division champs, wild card game next week, New England at the New York Jets. And later today, the 49ers will try to squeeze into the, all of the postseason action. The Bears will have two weeks to rest up. They don't have to play next week because they have home field and best record, and so the bumps and bruises will have that extra week to heal. Third down and seven for the Lions here. gets it away and it is incomplete. Two bear defenders there and they actually broke up their own interception. Frazier and Marshall had only one been there either one. They had the best shot at the intercept. The intended receiver Alvin Moore 
Walter Payton's numbers today, Johnny, 132 yards of total offense going over 2,000 for the year. 16 carries for 77 yards on the ground. Four receptions for 55 through the air. So he will have crossed the 2,000-yard mark, but he will have lost the rushing title for the NFC to Gerald Riggs because he needed 91 just to tie Riggs. He was 91 behind. Fourth down for the Lions. Here it is. This is it. This is the old ball game right here. 3.13 on the clock. The Lions, who have just refused to surrender, get their last shot here at some points. Oh, what a hit. Hit ball on the ball. take it any time. The heaviest man in NFL history to score a TD off. What did that say? Off a set play. Well, <laughs> he did that earlier in the year. He caught a pass against oh. Green Bay. And this one, he went 59 yards before the 380 was lugging started to take its toll. Well, he's always in the right spot. Look at, at the, the right agility time. of that, huh? Look I at mean, the he, move. He is amazing. He is amazing. Now, this is the inexperience in running the ball. When the guy's bearing down, he make a quick cut. Well, he did cut. He actually cut, but David Lewis says, I'm not going to let him get in there. That would be too embarrassing. McMahon is back in at quarterback. So is Peyton. So is Peyton. And running back. And he gets to the 11-yard line. So we've seen Fuller and Tomzak briefly, but the Bears have their first unit backfield in there, at least. And there is the bridge. The fridge, that'll be worth about 10 more endorsements. <laughs> Otis Wilson can't believe it either. <laughs> Six turnovers by the Lions today. I know what he'll endorse next, the tearaway jersey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be one of the shoe manufacturers, I would think, will, will be wanting them to oh, endorse uh, pure foot speed. This game turned out to be one of the best of the year, actually. Second down, the Bears with their full first-team offense in. The pass intended for Moorhead, incomplete. Good rush by the Lions. Fantetti and Williams were blitzing. And McMahon backpedaling, couldn't get it to Moorhead. Moorhead actually couldn't clear fast enough for him to, to have a chance at catching the ball. And there's Demetrius Johnson coming limping to the sideline. Boy, that's a shame to get hurt with a couple of minutes left in the season. Hope it's not serious. Well, everybody wants to see this one more time. Really, the first part of this is what's amazing. Watch him leap right oh, here. Oh, boy, what a hit Hipple took. He gets over his man, and as Papa Bear George Hallis used to say, he says the guys that force the fumble, he said guys who pick up fumbles are the guys that are usually standing around. But the old the old stride started to shorten on him there, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> McMahon to the end zone. Yes or no? Touchdown. <laughs> kind of a slow call. Kenny Marjoram, the receiver. And meanwhile, upfield near the 40-yard line, tempers flaring again. And flags being thrown as the officials would like to just get this one over with without any fisticuffs. And the coaches, Wayne Fonts there, and Darrell Rogers helping to separate the combatants. But Marjoram with a diving grab of the pass from Jim McMahon. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll take a look at the pass. We and, have uh, personal foul, Detroit, number 33. Uh, William Graham Chicago gets called for the penalty. It's Kenny Marjoram who makes the reception here with a nice move to the inside and into the outside. But it's uh, it's it's living dangerously. The game is over, and you've got McMahon in there. You've got uh, Walter Payton in there, and you've got the playoffs coming up. Uh, you got to wonder. See, just for a shot, just exactly like that, the game 
is over with, and McMahon's taking those kind of shots. I don't understand it. You don't understand why their first team unit is in after the right. fumble recovery and yes. return by Perry. Well, uh, I don't either. Uh, and uh, there, uh, you're, you made a very graphic uh, description of, of, of why they shouldn't be with the playoff around the corner. William Graham, there's no love loss between him and the Bears anyway, and uh, he was penalized for taking that shot at McMahon after the ball had been released. Butler got the point after. There's Marjoram, who meanwhile made a great catch, and we're down to the two-minute mark. Back at the Silver Dome, two minutes to play, 37-17 Bear lead. Remember, this game was 6-3 at the half. <laughs> this has just been a wild and woolly and thoroughly entertaining second half, and we've got more football ahead for you. The big one in San Francisco, the Super Bowl champs trying to stay alive. Cowboys already in as champ to the NFC East. And a long kickoff by Butler. And Hall, just a yard off the end line, elected wisely not to bring it out. And apparently we are told that the game is underway in uh, San Francisco. There's no score as yet. We'll be going quickly to it. And as soon as we conclude here in this wild setting of the Silver Dome, where some of the fans turn cushion seats into Frisbees in the last minute or two, Get into the act. Uh, audience participation, which is something I uh, hope will uh, calm down around the NFL. Spectators, yes. Participants, no. These players are getting paid to participate. First down from the 20 yard line for the Lions. Eric Kippel, gunny display. Don't forget the hit he took, and now he completes it to Manley for a first down. All but forgotten was a huge hit. Marshall on Hipple on the fumble recovery by Perry, and here he is back out here again, still throwing, trying to get his team downfield. Hipple has taken a lot of punishment in this game, a lot. 17-yard gain on the play. He's 19 of 39, 263 yards, and he's got another completion. Leonard Thompson close to the first down. Reggie Phillips getting some work on the corner for the Bears made the tackle. And uh, they call it about an eight-yard game. Do you think the refrigerator is tired in there on defense now? I bet he's still <laughs> puffing. Let's watch him see how he does. Well, I tell you, it's... <laughs> Completely oh. Alvin Moore on a first down. Wilbur Marshall. Boy, does he hit you. Boy, he has tattooed a few people Whoa. today, hasn't he? Starting with Joe Ferguson, who was scheduled to start, was the starter today because of the knee injury to Hipple. Marshall knocked him out of the game, and he's given Hipple equal licks. First down at midfield for the Bears, and we'd like to thank these gentlemen responsible all season long, our executive producer, Terry O'Neill. Here at the site, well, no, not here at the site, Charles H. Milton III is our senior producer. Here at the site, David Michaels from the Los Angeles area. Is, is sunny, David California. still here? Oh, okay. And from New York City, <laughs> Peter Blechner, our director. <laughs> Associate to... producer, Alan Brum. Field technical manager, Sandy Bell, making sure everything's plugged in today. And we thank our support staff from our broadcast production crew and all of our fine technicians. And I think we have to congratulate the Chicago Bears. They have gone 15 and one. That uh, ties the most wins ever in a National Football League season with San Francisco of last year. But Mike Ditka and his team and his defensive coaches, the scouting combine, President Mike McCaskey, is, this organization has become a fast first-class organization, has played good, hard-nosed football every game. And they have earned the right and should be favored to win the Super Bowl. No question about that. And they're plenty of fun to watch. Manley as Hipple is playing this last minute like it's the first minute of the season. And he gets the Lions to the 35-yard line with 45 seconds left. Detroit saying, let's get one more score. We've been beaten up today, and we've been out luck plenty, but we're not being out worked. And he is sacked again back at the 42-yard line. Number five on the day, Tyrone Keys, backup offensive lineman from Mississippi State, out of the Canadian Football League, and is third year with the Bears. You know, last year in the Silver Dome, the Bears sacked the Lions 12 times. Do you remember that? 49. Yep, 12 times. So they have five sacks. Second and 17, Hippel and company. And again, and it's 
the refrigerator, squashing Hipple. His helmet came off. So Perry wasn't too tired to get the quarterback. Uh, Hipple wants a timeout. He says uh, 18 seconds on the clock, and Hipple might have uh, gotten a little whack in the mouth there. Let's take a look at uh, Perry, who's got to be dog tired. Uh, Chris Diedrich is blocking on him, and he actually gets uh, almost through a double team and comes over as Hippo went forward in the pocket. Give Wachter 70 some credit, and there goes the helmet. Boy, Hippo wondered what fell on him, huh? <laughs> a refrigerator. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, uh, he is some you. kind. He is uh, really amazing. Yeah, 300 and some pounds, and to do some of the things that he does. You know, Mike Ditka was right. This guy is an athlete. A little Avoir Dupois is in evidence over the belt line there, but it doesn't seem to slow the fridge any. We saw him at his fleet, his most fleet today, uh, scampering downfield. Didn't quite make it to the end zone, but that'll be another memorable play for all the highlight films. Uh, Buddy Ryan says he'd like him to lose about 20 pounds for next year, and uh, he thinks he'll be a much better defensive lineman. He's gotten a lot of experience this year. He's just a rookie, and... Uh, He's played more and more and more. Uh, Mike Ditka wanted him to play more, so he played more, and he's done okay. He's improved gradually as you look at Buddy Ryan, who is another man who has done a great job along with Mike Ditka. Buddy Ryan's defense uh, going to be number one overall. And against the rush, and the Cowboys have opened the scoring at San Francisco. We'll be going right to that game at the conclusion of this one. Cowboys seven to zip. Hipple had a chance for a breather with a timeout. He gets another hit, and oh! The pass is dropped by Bland. First one he's dropped today, that youngster's caught everything thrown his way. The ball was there, a super pass by Hipple. You know, Hipple has seldom looked sharper than he did today. He's 22 of 43, 291 yards. And while he did have a couple of interceptions earlier, he's really been throwing the ball very well. There's been several key passes dropped. That's fourth down, and you know they're going to try one more time. 13 seconds to go. I like the fire of this Detroit Lions team and full credit to Darrell Rodgers and his staff. A very professional performance today by his team with a heartbreaking elimination from the playoffs a week ago at the hands of Green Bay. And Hipple just airs it out there. And it is intercepted in the end zone by Dave Dewerson on the deflection with three seconds on the clock. So that'll be it for the Lions for 1985. The Chicago Bears, as Eric Kippel, who certainly gave it his all, leaves the field. And his final appearance wasn't scheduled to start today, but had to come in for the injured Joe Ferguson. The Bears will have a couple of weeks off and await the winner of that wild card game between the Giants and either the 49ers and the Redskins. And they will meet the winner of that game. Mike Ditka says we play every game to win. And the Bears came to win today and win they did. He was talking to the fridge there and probably congratulating him on coming up with another electric kind of a play. But Mike Ditka is now 19 of his last 21 games. You know, that's 19 and 2. That's pretty good. They have beaten NFC Central teams eight consecutive times and now nine on the road. They have dominated the NFC Central. And that is the final score. Bears 37, Detroit 17 for Johnny Morris, Tim Ryan. Saying so long from Pontiac. Be sure to stay with us. Coming up, Dallas and San Francisco as CBS Sports coverage of the NFL continues after this word from your local station. Uh, just something that provoked me, and, if, and after he got me around, then he thought he could play better football. I beat him a lot of times, but start, I'd start talking to him and the ball be snapped, I'd be gone. His voice, he would just continually talk the whole ball game, yakety, yakety, yak. Uh, uh, you know, your grandmother didn't have but one shoe or something like that, and, and I would get so mad at him, and I would just fire him, at, and, and I forget about what I'm supposed to do, and put the play John and call, and the starting count and everything, and before you know it, we got a battle going. And Parker would take off his helmet and go to the official, and he'd actually get tears in his eyes, and he'd cry, and he said, he can't call me that, he can't call me that. And he said, Jim, there's nothing in the rule books that says he can't call you that. He said, we're going to have to get a rule change. In 1967, Atkins was traded to New Orleans. 
where the Saints hope to squeeze one more good season out of his battered 37-year-old Bobby. Instead of one good year, they got three great ones. What's old? Uh, I hear coaches say so. They've got these young kids, young kids. Hey, the young kid can't play. He's no good. I have an old man with two years left, and a young man with ten, he can't play. So I think we, I hear him on TV now. This young, young, young. I mean, it's good to be young, but I was a lot better football player at 39 than I was 23. In 1968, Doug received the first Vince Lombardi Award given to the most dedicated player in the game. At the award